Welcome to the 24th of August 2020 Central Coast Council Ordinary Meeting. Due to rapidly evolving events in the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, it is agreed for everyone's safety to conduct tonight's ordinary meeting remotely. I remind our viewers that we are still bound by a public health order that currently restricts large gatherings in confined spaces and requirements in physical distancing. Council have a responsibility to ensure our community staff and councillors are all safe, and that includes creating a safe environment. This situation is, of course, evolving and one that we will continue to monitor in consultation with staff and councillors. Our priority is the safety of our community, the staff and, of course, the councillors. It is with that in mind that we will monitor the circumstances week to week and consider all factors. Restrictions are changing at a rapid rate. For these reasons, please ensure that you remain up to date with current information through federal and state government websites. For a council run facilities and events, please check the website. Being COVID-19 safe is everybody's responsibility. Please play your part by ensuring you practice physical distancing, good hand hygiene, and stay at home if you are sick. Avoid crowded spaces. We also ask that if you are in a crowded space, for example, on public transport, take precautions and wear a mask. On a more positive note, I'd like to take the opportunity to acknowledge the excellent work undertaken by council staff and congratulate uh, council on the achievement in winning the Reporting to Your Community Award for its inaugural Central Coast Waterways Report Card at this year's RH Doherty Awards. We are honoured to be recognised for this important initiative, which in the first of its, which is the first of its kind on the Central Coast and sets the standard for best practices in community education across the state. Our environment and planning team is to be commended for their involvement in this project, which plays an important role in protecting our rich environmental heritage and casts a positive spotlight on our region. Achieving this recognition only highlights the important role community engagement and consultation plays. The key to delivering for our community is ensuring our community is consulted and the various council advisory committees is one of the many ways to enable this to occur, particularly where there is a specific issue or topic and where, where delving further is necessary. As equally important is the briefings that council staff provide to councillors, including councillors participating in those briefings. I acknowledge that much effort and time is put into these briefings by staff, and without these, it proves difficult to make educated and informed decisions. I emphasise the importance of participating in these briefings so that we as councillors continue to serve our community to the best of our ability. Thank you. I will now hand over to the CEO, Mr. Gary Murphy, to run through some specifics of tonight's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Tonight's ordinary council meeting will be conducted remotely. This is in accordance with the amendment to the Local Government Act 1993, section 747A, COVID pandemic special provisions clause 1A1. This amendment commenced on the 25th of March, 2020, and has been put in place for a period of six months but can be extended to a period of 12 months to ensure the safety of the councillors, staff and the public. Councillors, you're still required to adhere to the relevant policies and procedures, including the Code of Meeting Practice and Code of Conduct. I note that councillors have been provided guidelines on how the ordinary meeting will be conducted tonight, but for those attending via webcast, I would like to advise the following. Councillors will be required to move or second an item by way of showing of hand, Indicate they wish to speak on any item by showing of hand. Once identified, the councillor will have three minutes to speak when the mayor calls on them. Ask questions by showing of hand, and if required, the relevant executive leadership team member will become visible for the question to be asked or responded to. I note that questions are required to be put succinctly and without debate. For any other items, showing of hand is required. Remain visible during the meeting. If they're no longer visible, they will be determined to have left the room. Voting will be conducted by a show of hands and the mayor will call off the names for and against. Councillors are asked to keep their hand visibly raised for the vote. 
Those councillors or staff who have pecuniary interest on items will be removed from the webcast during discussion and returned once completed. If there are any technical issues during the meeting, the Mayor will be advised accordingly and provide those in attendance an update. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr Murphy. I remind councillors and staff that this meeting is being recorded and that um, and webcast, so please be mindful of what you say. Please make sure that you turn your electronic devices to silent and ensure that you are free from any interruptions as it will make it hard to, for you to hear what's going on. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the dark and young people on which we meet today in our various meeting spaces and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Councillors, I note that there are there is one apology from Councillor Vincent who will be joining us um, in a little while. So at the moment, he's um, just a, a late apology. Um, Councillors, there are no further apologies as I note everybody else is on screen. Um, Councillors, do we have any uh, requests for leaves of, leave of absences? No, there are no hands. Thank you, Councillors. Um, therefore, I, do I have a mover and a seconder for the Councillor Holstein, Councillor Go, all those in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Sundstrom, is that a hand up? Thank you, unanimous. Thank you, councillors. Councillors, um, I move to um, item for disclosure of interest. I note that we have a disclosure of interest from Councillor Holstein. Councillor Holstein, I un. Okay, got it now. Yes. Uh, thank you for that, Madam Mayor. The, um, it is a less than significant non-pecuniary interest, so I will participate in the debate. Uh, it's 3.8. Uh, that is the update from the Gosford Library. I had previously noted that down as significant non-pecuniary because of my uh, work for eight hours a week involves regional youth. They have now changed their circumstances and they are in the process of leaving that building for a new premises that have been purchased in the Gosford CBD. So there is no conflict in what will ultimately be the redevelopment of that site as far as I'm concerned in my employment. So it is a less than significant non-pecuniary and I will participate in the debate. Thank you, Councillor Holstein. I know Councillor McGregor. Um, I'm just trying to find the number. I think it's yeah, two two point one. Um, as a member of the Joint Regional Planning Panel, as a delegate for Council, um, it's a significant pecuniary interest as I um, receive a fee for participating in these meetings. So I'll be stepping out of the virtual chamber for that item. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sundstrom. Yeah, similar to uh, Councillor McGregor, uh, item 2.1. <clears throat> I'm an alternate for the um, Joint Regional Planning Panel. And um, for that reason, there's a, a pecuniary interest and I'll remove myself, will be removed from the room. I won't participate. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Burke. Councillor Burke, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now, Madam Mayor? Yep, yep. Yeah, good. Yeah, 2.1 a pecuniary interest. I'm a member of that panel, the Joint Regional Planning Panel. So I'll, I'll uh, abstain and leave the room. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Burke. Councillors, are there any further disclosures? Oh, Councillor Smith. Um, Madam Mayor, um, I'm not actually disclosing. I am just noting, though, that I'm also an alternate um, for the Regional Planning Panel. Uh, I don't believe um, that I need to disclose. I haven't uh, sat on the panel for some years. Um, and as this matter is not determining um, the application, it's just determining the consent authority, um, I won't be declaring. But I just thought it, I should note that since um, other panel members have declared on that item. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Great. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Councillors, we have no further declarations, therefore I'll ask, uh, moved by Councillor for the declarations. Councillor Gale, second by Councillor McGregor. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Unanimous, thank you, Councillors. 
Uh, Councillor Best, you have a procedural. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my procedural is um, Mr Murphy just outlined um, all the uh, comings and goings of this meeting and how it will be conducted and how it will be treated on live. Um, I note that uh, on my other machine, the live stream, that uh, again, it appears that we have made some decision, Madam Mayor, which I've not been part of, to block the community out of the live stream. And I'm wondering from Mr Murphy, who, who made that decision under what code procedure was it made under and were we consulted, please? Because I can, uh, again, tonight, I don't think, although my other machine's not going so well here, but I don't think the community are able to make their comments as they've been making in the past on our live feed. Why has that been blocked out, please? And who's been consulted about that? Mr Murphy? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, this matter was raised, I think, at the um, the last council meeting. Uh, I think the, the best answer to it is that comments in a chat uh, facility are not provided for in the Code of Meeting Practice, so there is no requirement for council to provide that facility. So we, we weren't consulted on it, we just got done by staff, did it, in this open and transparent council? Through you, Councillor Beth, sorry, um, Mr. Murphy, I've got a point of order by Councillor Smith. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and look, I will just reflect that Councillor Best raised this at the last meeting. It doesn't refer to anything on the agenda. It's not in the code of meeting practice and therefore it should not be discussed at this meeting. Councillor Best has other avenues to take this up. You know, we, um, you know, the agenda is what we're discussing. There's nothing relevant on the agenda um, in regards to this matter. So um, it's not relevant, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Look, um, I guess you're probably right. I, I guess Mr Murphy's answered your question, Councillor Best, so I will be moving on. All right, well, Councillor Smith's completely wrong, but I'll deal with that shortly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Again. <clears throat> thank you. Councillors, I'll now move to item 1.2, which is the confirmation of the previous minutes. Do I have a mover for the minutes? Councillor McGregor, second by Councillor Hogan. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Oh, yeah. Unanimous, thank you, councillors. Councillors, we have item 1.3, the notice of intention to deal with matters in confidential. I know that we have no matters for um, closed session. So do I have a mover? Councillor McGregor, second by. Councillor Hogan, all those in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Matthew, is that up or down, Councillor? Thank you, unanimous. Thank you, councillors. Councillors will now move to um, the exception method which we all know it's a procedural motion to deal with the matters um, by exception. The exception method is where some of the items of business are resolved as a group and in accordance with the recommendations in the business paper. We've got some items already identified, which I will now call the items for any additional inclusion. So what I'll actually do is only call the items that are going through the exception. Anything I don't call means we'll be speaking to that motion um, because there's not many of those. So I'm just going to call them out, the ones that will be going through unless anybody has any queries. So the item that will be going through is item 4.1, which is the meeting record of the Town Centre Advisory Committee meeting. I have everybody's okay with that? Good. We had the meeting record of the Employment and Economic Development Committee. 14 July, that's going through. Everybody's okay with that. We have 4.4, um, which is the response to the notice of motion, um, the sewage issues in Camwell. That can go through. And then I, oh, sorry, um, councils, I missed one. Item 3.7, which is the uh, memorial, the request for the memorial plaque. I'm sorry, I missed that. So that's also going through. Nobody's Dying in a ditch for that one. And that would appear to be all of them, councillors. So therefore, what is going to be debated, I will now call out um, in this in the order. So 2.1, the planning proposal authority for the rezoning of the proposals of the set Aboriginal land. 3.1, code of meeting practice committees. 
3.2 local government uh, New South Wales annual conference attendance and voting, 3.3 grant funding update, 3.4 policy related to the environment and planning, 3.5 economic, sorry, environment and planning directorate draft policies on for community consultation, 3.6 councillors role in planning matters, 3.8 update on the Gosford Regional Library, 3.9 response to notice of motion soap in toilets, 4.3 activities of the development assessment and environment and certification units, 6.1, the deferred item notice of motion Broadwater Hotel site in Man Street, Gosford. 6.2, notice of motion committee costs update. 6.3, notice of motion forgotten North Gateway disgrace. Do I have a mover for the exception of Councillor Gay or do I have a second at Councillor Hogan? All those in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor McGregor, I think you might be frozen. Okay, um, it's unanimous all bar Council McGregor who seems to be frozen. Councillor, um, so Miss Sullivan, can you please check on Councillor McGregor because he's now um, completely gone off view. He may have some technical difficulties. If you could just um, follow up, that would be great. Thank you, councillors. Um, I will now move to item 2.1, which is the planning proposal authority for the rezoning proposals and SEP Aboriginal land. Uh, Councillor Sundstrom. Yeah, I'm out, I'm out for this one. Okay, thank you, Councillor Sundstrom, you're out. Councillor Burt will be out, uh, Councillor. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, Councillors, so we'll start. I think everybody's out now that needs to be out. Oh, Councillor Sundstrom's still here. Sarah, um, Ms. Giorgio. Um, Council McGregor also needs to leave. It's a bit like the... Okay, I think now we have everybody that can stay is here, unless I'm missing. I feel like I'm missing some. Nope. Okay, councillors, I'll now start back on the item 2.1, the planning proposal authority for rezoning the proposals and the SEP Aboriginal land. Um, I'm happy to move the staff recommendation. Do I have a seconder? Councillor McLaughlin. Um, Councillors, I'll open debate. Um, sorry, I'll open the debate in relation to this. Um, again, some time ago, we um, had a very similar situation where um, we had the um, opportunity to either um, go ahead with it or um, give it to the state. And we find ourselves yet again in a very similar circumstance. In fact, in this time, the state has given us a deadline to um, meet the requirement and um, put the proposal through. It's very clear that one of these particular um, developments have been going in the formal Wyong Council since 2014. And I'm afraid that um, we really possibly won't, won't get this done as there's some conflicting um, issues and interests um, in relation to the uh, department. Um, the state government uh, gave the Dark and Young its own set, which is a set of rules and guidelines um, without any consultation of this council. And it's creating, in my opinion, of course, um, a more complex um, issues in order to get the job done, um, whether we um, approve or not. So I would rather us basically hand, hand it to the state government and let them uh, resolve uh, the issues that currently are standing in the way of um, moving forward with both these developments. Um, so that's where I'm at with that one. Um, Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to second it. I mean, I think the it's proven that we haven't been able to deal with it, and I think the the, uh, the state government's made it clear that that um, they're going to uh, deal with the, the dark and jungle in, in their own manner. So I think it's it's in our interest to to not be in the way and not be obstructive and and let things get going. And and um, if I had my way, I'd actually add a few more uh, proposals to this list. I think the airport's another thing that should be handed over to the state government, but that's a different issue. But no, I'm happy to support the issue and move forward on it. 
Thank you, Councillor McLaughlin. Do I have anybody wanting Councillor Smith? Oh, sorry. Councillor Smith? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Madam Mayor, I was wondering if you would consider just adding a part. I note that um, staff are uh, indicating that they will have a meeting with Department of Planning, in Industry and Environment. I was wondering if we might just add that um, staff provide a report on that meeting through the Councillor Support Update. Um, I'd just be interested in knowing what the outcomes of that meeting might be. Yeah, I'm more than happy for that to be added in. Okay, thank you. Councillor you're okay with yeah, that? I'm, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah. Um, okay. uh, Madam Mayor, I will, um, even with that addition, I will be voting against it. And I did just want to say that, um, you know, I think Council has maintained a principal position in that, you know, planning should be um, with Council. Council should be the decision making on planning matters. Um, I understand the various frustrations about timeframes. However, I think it's important and um, that planning happens with due process um, and that those matters need to get resolved. Um, it's not, um, and, and those processes should be followed. So, um, so I will be voting against it. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Do I have Councillor Holstein? Sorry, I'll unmute. I've unmuted myself, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, just to say that I'll be consistent with, uh, as I was last time, I, like Councillor Smith, believe that um, we we actually have enough planning powers taken away from us and now we're giving them away. But I do understand the circumstances in this. We've been put between a rock and a hard place. And I doubt very much that even the state government will be able to meet the requirements in any given time frame on making decisions on this because it is a very complicated and it is a very um, uh, difficult decision. But uh, I still have this principal believe that uh, we in local government should be to the forefront of making these decisions and I don't accept the decision to uh, to give those away so I won't be supporting the motion Madam Mayor. Thank you Councillor Holstein. Councillor Best. The mute goes behind the chat box. Um, question through you um, to to Mr. Cox, I would imagine this is going to go to. Um, is he there somewhere, hiding in the background? No, it's actually Mr. Martello, and he's. Oh, is it? Ah, oh, right. Okay. Mm, okay. Mr. Martello, um, your report on this um, indicates that there are some extraordinarily difficult issues around biocertification and a whole lot of other environmental milestones that needs to be made. Um, you heard Councillor Holstein's comments. The council has been gutted when it comes to its planning powers. Why do you make this recommendation? I mean, you tell us. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. The... Then, I, then I may speak to it, Madam Mayor. Thank you. So, Go ahead. As uh, some of the other councillors have already mentioned, the, there are some um, intricacies in relation to assessing these planning proposals, um, primarily as a result of the Aboriginal SEP that has been introduced. That is a, a planning instrument that when layered over um, other existing planning instruments that apply to these proposals, uh, makes it quite um, challenging for staff to understand how they interact with each other um, in, in instances where they may be in opposition or contradiction of each other. Uh, I also note that it is my understanding we are the, these are the first planning proposals um, in the state to be put through this planning instrument, the Aboriginal study. So it is a bit of, um, there, there is an element of it, which is uh, being the first ones to, to work through this framework and understanding the challenges that go with it. So supplementary to that, um, you know, you're in charge of our, um, our economic initiatives and economic lands and what have you. We've just lost um, the opportunity um, for the biocertification at Warnervale in the Warnervale Wes area. Do we suffer similar a similar fate of this rather impassed position that you're trying to hand off to the state? Uh, again, through you, Madam Mayor, it's my understanding that the state is currently undertaking a strategic biodiversity assessment for the whole of the Central Coast that once complete will hopefully resolve some of these matters. When do you think that might be finished? Uh, I'll take that one on notice, Councillor. It's a, a matter for the state. You might cash your super in by then, you reckon? 
All right, Madam Mayor, this just highlights, and I, I'm going to support this because it, it's it's got to go forward. And what it's just highlighting um, is the paralysis that we've woven ourselves here in the first world country um, of 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 you know the nanny state. We are we have created an absolute impasse, and we as a community, as a society, not as a council. Um, but the checks and balances that are in place, and we all recognise we've come to the scenic central coast for that very reason, and we wish to maintain it. But when I look at this and I look at the WES, and the WES is our, our, our future, our holy grail of employment opportunity, and it's now also in paralysis. Um, and look, this might be actual music. I'm afraid, Councillor Best, you have frozen. To some in this, this is the agenda, and it's stuff on there. Yeah, they can't. It just isn't going to work. Um, and this is what's happened to the WES. So I don't see really. In fact, with the WES itself, and I know we're not debating WES tonight, but we we can almost pack up on that one as well. So tonight, the only way this can go forward is to give it back to the state and see if they can try and, you know, yaw this out um, because. We are bringing people to the central coast by the thousands, and with the um, with the uh, advent of technology and uh, the zooming of work and working from home, we're going to have we're going to have thousands and thousands of more people come here, and the work from home thing may stick, but it won't completely stick. It'll, we'll go back to it eventually after COVID when that day comes, and we're not going to have the jobs. We don't have them now, and we're st certainly not going to have them in the future. Um, so. Here it is. It's just, it's just, we've just trapped ourselves. We've trapped our community, um, and we've lost our planning powers in Gosford. We've lost them at the, we've lost control at the airport. We've lost control at the beaches. We've had the Aboriginal set brought in on us as well. So, real councillors, when you run in September 2021, um, you just want to be um, up for a bit of baby kissing, some ribbon cutting, and some plaque opening because you're not going to be making any other meaningful contributions because this council is completely devoid of. It's powers. It doesn't have any anymore. It's it's ceremonial. Welcome to your ceremonial council. They don't trust us. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Best. Councillor Greenaway. Thank you. I just wanted to put on the public record that I don't support um, our local council relinquishing our role of planning proposal authority. So um, we, or a lot of us, um, did attempt to get onto council in order to make decisions for our local community and about our local community. So I just feel relinquishing those at this point is what well, goes against the grain for me. So I'll be voting against this, um, even though I understand some people have an opposite position, um, but I still get contacted by a lot of people that don't understand the local planning panel process, um, wanting me to um, make decisions one way or another on things and it's difficult for them to understand how we have a council that the state government has seen to um, I suppose weaken in a way and, and reduce our ability to serve the very people that voted for us to serve them. Thank you. Thank you Council Greenway. It doesn't appear that there are any more speakers so therefore I will put item 2.1 one, planning proposal authority of rezoning proposals in the SEP Aboriginal land. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Matthews, Councillor Best, Councillor Hogan, Councillor Marquette, Councillor Mertens, Councillor Gale, Councillor McLaughlin, Councillor Pillen. All those against. Councillors Greenaway, Councillors Holstein, Councillor Smith. I declare the motion carried. Thank you, Councillors. I'll now just wait for our colleagues to re-enter the room. One, two. Councillors, I'm just waiting on Councillor McGregor.
Great. Everybody seems to be here. Thank you, councillors. Um, the next item, councillors, is um, item 3.1, the Code of Meeting Practice Committees. I see Councillor Marquette would like to move that. Councillor Marquette, do I have a seconder for Councillor Marquette for the motion? No seconder. Like of a second. Oh, Councillor Gar, thank you. Councillor Marquette. Thank you, very, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, I'd just like to say it's great to have you back this week. We might get some fair adjudication in the chair. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'd like to move um, option one, if I could, which was the staff uh, recommendation at the bottom of page 49. Which, which is the council determined, motion. Which is that council determined not to progress the investigation of a committee structure in accordance with part 20 of the Code of Meeting Practice at this time. Have it, the staff don't have that, so you're changing what the staff recommended. Is that what you, that's what you're saying, right? I'm 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 moving option one. Okay, they're just getting it now, Councillor Marquette. Thank you. Council Best, why I know you've sent you want to make an amendment. Are you making an amendment to what Council Marquette's putting up? No. So you now withdrawing your amendment? No, no, no. I'm I'm making an amendment. To what uh, he's putting up. Yes, yes, so, to what okay, he's putting right. up. Yes. Okay. Sorry, sorry, I misunderstood you. I apologize. Okay. Do you wish it to come to you now? Or are we or the lady well, busy? Well, we're just Okay, I'll hold. Okay, import option. So we're still. It might waiting. save a lot of debate if I get the amendment in early, because I know we've got a lot on tonight, and we I did go to midnight that. last week without I'm, I'm one happy to cheering. hear it. I'm happy oh. to hear it. All right. Would you? Do like you to... have have staff got your amendment? No, no. I just after he moved that, I just okay. created it here, sitting in my my dark right. den. So I'll I'll read it in, um, but I'll, I'll just read it. I'll read it. Do you want to read it in so it can be typed in? Go. Okay, please. So um, uh, Sonia, I believe, is, is, is behind the keys. So Sonia, on, I, to help you um, a little bit, on page 43, if you go to the staff recommendation, um, go down to the second line, um, three quarters of the way along, and it says that this matter B, and straight after B, um, that this matter the turn my page back to me pages. That this matter be deferred for consideration by the council of September 2021. I've got to get rid of that panel over the screen. You've got the, that panel is blocking my view. Right, um, thank you. And then two, um, uh, that council now also review its code of meeting practice to allow for public comment to accompany Council's live stream podcast. If I have a seconder, 
Oh, I'm happy to accept the wording. So you'd withdraw yeah. can what you I, Yeah. Can I just actually, um, I've got uh, Miss Sullivan just wants to make a comment, if you don't mind. Please, if I just Lisa. bring her in. Thank you. Miss Sullivan. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, um, I just wanted to highlight that the Central Coast Council Code of Meeting Practice is currently on public exhibition and um, is coming back, I believe, at the end of September. Um, so I just, I don't know whether Council would like to note that in that part too. So it could be included as part of that further report coming to Council. Yeah, so happy to put that in. Do you want to add some words into that, Shane, that might work for you? Sorry, Ms Sullivan, that would work for you? I'm happy. Perhaps it's simply that council note the review of the code of meeting practice. Okay. And and now also, all right. And that it's a is minor. Also. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Good point. Thank you. It's permanently on exhibition in this council, if I recall. Anyway, Madam Mayor, I think um, I've got the call. Then have I, if Councillor Marquette's withdrawn, might save ourselves a few hours here. Councillor Marquette, you've withdrawn, have you? Oh, I'm happy with the wording, but yeah, I'm happy. I, I don't need to speak on it at all, so I'm happy for Councillor Best to go straight into it. Is there it. any opposition, Madam Mayor? Because, I mean, like, you know, uh, we can get home. Got to midnight last week or last fortnight. I, I'm happy not to talk to it if I have my Councillor right Councillor Sunstrom, I believe. Is opposition. No. Councillor Sunstrom? Yeah, um, I'm actually calling a point of order. At the moment, we have Councillor Marquette with the call. And he doesn't. We offer True. to Councillor Best, um, and that's against the code of meeting practice. Too. Well, actually, Councillor Marquette withdrew. Um, with, did withdraw, so Councillor Best's name I'm can go. I'm not so on. sure he did withdraw. I think he said he's happy to let Councillor Best head. I think um, he said withdraw, but thank you, Madam withdraw, Mayor. Withdraw, that'd be nice. Okay. Look, yep. Madam Mayor, so, maybe briefly, I'll just try and give a really quick snapshot. I want to thank the staff. Um, for the excuse me. Sorry. Can you, Councillor Best, can you wait until the um, Mayor has dealt with what I've raised? So my understanding is, and I'll concur, Councillor Marquette has withdrawn and Councillor Best now is the mover. <coughs> Councillor Gale, you are happy to still second the motion? Right. So Councillor Sundstrom, I believe now that it is all is in order. Thank Council you for that, Madam best. Mayor. Just very briefly, look, um, I want to thank the staff uh, for, for the effort. A lot of councillors has gone in behind the scenes. I've been um, interested in this for some time and I've spoken to a number of staff around it and they've put a huge effort in. Um, and this one, it was developed originally, um, goes back quite some months. In fact, I think like six months or more, it's been thought about, um, well, more than six months. And, and when it was coming to council, we were going to an election next month. That was the thinking when this was in its embryo. It was meant to come to this council for right now and go into consideration for the new council in a month's time, but a month's gone and we're in COVID and we're a year out. So when you establish a council, as most of you will recall, you 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 review everything. You review your structure. It's a, it's a requirement of the act <coughs> to review your structure. So this is part of that I, I contest and that you know, to set this up now and try and set it up now and put the time into developing it, you'd only get a couple of meetings before you end up in caretaker mode. So, so really, what's the point of going down this timeline that we know really should have started at the beginning of a four-year term of council where it can be applied? I have been in councils, numerous councils that have committees of the whole, and that's what this is. And they are very effective if they're managed and structured properly. And that takes a bit of time. And I just think now that we're going to get, you know, six months out of this, if, if that, and then we're into caretaker mode. So I just think, why do it? But don't, don't park the staff work. A lot of work's gone in. This is going to be a fresh document to go over to the new council and give them four years to carry this forward. And, and I think we've been a bit of the guinea pig in this council, uh, in, in fairness to all those who've tried to chair meetings, um, that, that it's not easy to do this with the current structure. And I've been banging on behind the scenes about the structure. Um, the secretariat to the councillors. It, it, it just, Gary, is, is, is with great respect, a, a, a dinosaur of a procedure that we as directors have to try and manage with the, the way this support beast's going on and how we're not keeping on top of everything. And these committees are part of that journey. This should have started three years ago, but even then I was dubious because we only had a three-year council. 
but a four-year council, then this is really worthwhile. But we do need to completely restructure this business and we need to learn from the, the shortcomings of this council and the difficulties that we've all gone through. The personal difficulties, forget COVID, there's pressure on our families, pressure on our work relation, the pressure on ourselves, um, the pressure on each other in our, in our bureaucracy interface. Um, this is not the way to run the business. And, and, and this being brought in at the 11th hour is... I don't think going to help us a hell of a lot at all. On the other issue, which I put on as point two, councillors, the staff put that up there and it was working fine. They chose to do it. And then all of a sudden we've taken it down and stopped our community. The ones that we talk transparency to can't actually offer a comment in a council um, forum online. And the new era is here now. And I think people were pretty annoyed when they found they, they couldn't contribute anymore, Madam Mayor. But thank you. Thank you, Councillor Best. Councillor Gale, a seconder, would you like to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, I support this particular motion, Councillor Best, and I support the intent that Councillor Marquette was putting forward as well. I think we're all on the same page. We're three quarters through our term. It's not the right time for us to be introducing committees from my perspective. I think it needs to be held off to the next um, council board. So I think Councillor Best is correct in putting in the September 2020. I think committee of the whole is the way that we need to continue to operate for the, um, for the following year, which will see out this term of our current council board. So I support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Gar. Um, I know I've got some opposition, but I have got um, Councillor Greenway and Councillor Holstein, you want to speak, but I've got um, an amendment coming through from Councillor Smith. I'm sorry, I'm trying yep. to, oh, there you are, sorry. When people come and go, the screen's moved and just when I know where you are, you all move on me again, I, my apologies. Councillor Smith, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll just move the original recommendation from the staff, if I have a seconder. Councillor Vincent, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just speaking to that, um, look, I understand the points that the councillors are making about the term, but I um, would think that now is the right time um, to reflect on the first three years, what's worked, what hasn't worked. Um, a new council may not have that experience to reflect on. And so I think it is an appropriate time to consider options for governance. It's not necessarily saying those options will be introduced straight away. Um, there may well be a process, depending on what the outcome is, and I'm not um, preempting any outcome at this stage. Um, the committee model is, um, is similar to what Late Macquarie does. I know uh, when Mr Bell was our acting CEO, our interim CEO initially, um, there was some thought about um, perhaps looking at that model. At that point, I think some of the councillors really felt that it was a duplication of um, discussing things because you would have a committee and then it would come to a full meeting. Um, but as the report said, there are other models that were um, considered as part of the review of local government and local boards. And I actually don't know much about local boards. That's why I'm interested in finding out about that option from staff. So it really is just asking staff to investigate those options and to workshop with the councillors. I think we do have experiences from the past three years to provide input into what has worked and what has not worked. And I think that's valuable experience to be part of a conversation at this point in time. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Vincent, a seconder of the amendment. Uh, no comment, Madam Mayor. I, I support the um, amendment. Great. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. Councillor Holstein, you had a question. It wasn't a question, Madam Mayor. It was oh, more a comment, uh, having uh, experienced the committees of the whole, which I found in my previous experience worked exceedingly well. Um, but unlike some of the debate this evening that says, well, you know, um, we're nearing the end of our term, um, this isn't that I don't disagree with the motion of Councillor Best, because I've been been tossing back which way this should go. I don't mind the investigation into it, but it's not going to be something that this council is going to work because committees of the whole, yes, if they are managed correctly, if they are structured properly, will give a better outcome. But it also requires a level of trust and working in good faith among the councillors. And I have to say that I, I don't see this in the current council at times. And I would worry that we would probably be damaging what would be 
uh, an area I'd like us to move to, and if I'm not there in the next council, that the other councillors can consider. I'll support the motion of Councillor Best at this stage, because quite frankly, uh, a new council with, with trust and working in good faith with a committee of the whole that is managed and structured properly is a better and a more appropriate way to move forward. But um, uh, even if you, even if his motion is lost, it's not going to be something that will be implemented by this council. I don't think there is the capacity uh, nor the willingness in this council. I'm sorry, um, because a committee of the whole does need, it needs the councillors to have trust in one another, to be working with good faith. And that has just been evident so, so, so far too often that we can't do that as a council at the moment. Believe me, this is the way to go, but I think it's going to be the next council that do it. So I'll be supporting the motion of Councillor Best. Thank you, Councillor Holstein. Councillor Sundstrom, I believe you're speaking for the amendment. Yes, thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm speaking for the amendment because I think it's a great opportunity for us to improve on the way we do business. It gives the staff an option, sorry, the capacity to investigate and bring back a report for us on um, you know, a different way of doing business. I'd hope that um, I take on board what Councillor um, Holstein just mentioned about the fact that there's a unlimited amount of goodwill. There is goodwill in this council, just not goodwill by all um, elected members. This would give the opportunity for those elected members that are not showing that good faith to show that good faith and improve the output and improve the results that this council can achieve. I note that um, as Councillor Holstein also mentioned that some councils are talking about the fact that um, you know, we're running down into a uh, September 2021 election. Well, if those councillors feel like it's time to put their feet up and coast in the election, they can do that if they want. But here's an opportunity for them to get stuck in, to give some goodwill and to work collegiately with a group of councillors that are already doing so. I recommend the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Sundstrom. Councillor Marquette, you're speaking against the amendment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, I'd, and, and I think, um, unfortunately, Councillor, Councillor Sundstrom forgot to read the information again before he um, spoke to anything. But what well, the fact of the matter is, and, and why um, I definitely was against this, and some of my colleagues obviously are as well, is if you have a look at what's being moved right now, which is the staff recommendation, it, after that, it clearly tells you that the actions the staff are going to implement is in February 2021 at the budget planning workshop, they're going to put a series of options in front. So that doesn't mean in February 2021, Councillor Sundstrom will all be able to suddenly sit around and sing Kumbaya and be happy. These committees won't be in place till God knows when. Now, we'll, we'll, be in, we'll be almost in caretaker mode before they're in there. So you need to ask yourself, what is the point of this? What's the real underlining reason this is happening? It's got nothing with trying to pull this council together. I can guarantee you that much. So then you need to think. Should we be the ones deciding if for the last couple of months or maybe even weeks of our existence in this council of what the, what the next councils are going to be left with? If we wanted to do this, we had a time to do this years ago. We didn't do so. And to try and implement it now, it's really got um, it's got the stench of something underhanded to me. Um, these committees, um, God knows how they'll be placed, but I've, I absolutely agree with Councillor Holstein. If you're going to have such a structure, you would have to have a congenial council that actually can get things done. I haven't seen any evidence of that. I pray to God we've got one of those next time up to September 21. But let's let those individuals decide this, guys. I speak against this amendment, and I hope that um, we've got the opportunity, like Councillor Holstein said he will, to go back to Councillor Best wording and vote for that. Um, the other thing I'd like to say on this is that also in this structure, once again, at a time where we're, we're, we're in the middle of a, a pandemic and people are losing their jobs left, right and centre, we're about to have considered an, an, an alternate structure to what we're living now, which is going to cost God knows how much more money. Now, I know you're only asking for a report back, but we all know the way this goes. The reports come back and they say, yep, it's going to cost an extra three, four $400,000 a year and eight of the councillors can't wait to whack their hands up. So I'm not even going to support for that to, to be an option. We should be doing this as, as, as in the most cost-effective manner that we possibly can. And by trying to change the, change the structure of our organisation at the 11th hour at two minutes to midnight is not a good idea. These committees, these committees will cost exactly as much as what we're doing right now as a council meeting would cost. God knows how much that would be per annum. 
So we don't need to put that on a council for in, in September 2021 that's going to be dealing with the cleanup of a pandemic. Please vote against this amendment. Let's get back to the original wording from Councillor Best. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor McQuick. Councillor McGregor, and I understand you're having some issues. So if you um, freeze, we'll persevere. Um, yes, yeah, so th thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. You have frozen. Hopefully it doesn't drop out. Um, I feel like this is as controversial as people are making out. I, I think it gives people an opportunity to work in goodwill. And it's also an opportunity to resolve some of the more contentious issues to a point before they come to the chamber. It allows councillors and staff to be more organised and it allows det um, details of important things to be looked at in a collegiate way, in a sensitive way, and in a way with genuine engagement and interest in them. Now, I don't see why people have such a problem working with their colleagues. I don't see why pe some people have such a problem with working in the best interest of practice of good government. There are committees which should be wound up. There are other committees that do important work. We have to look at different ways and we need to look at the committees that work very well, like the Water Advisory Committee or the Bushfire Management Committee. Um, I would encourage the councillors to support the amendment of the councillors Smith and Vincent and to see through some of the skylarking and the grandstanding and the silly political games of others. Thanks, Councillor Greg. I've got a question from Councillor Best. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, could I ask a question of the author of the report, please, through you, um, which is Sarah Giorgio, section manager, report author. I think she's in the background, is she? She is. Would that be okay? No, you've got Miss Sullivan. Oh, okay. Far away. Um, where is Miss Sullivan? She, well, I can't see she's she down my bottom up. left, but. Hang on, oh, you keep, I've got the same problem you've got there. Yeah, all kept moving. I know what your the problem is up there, Lisa, trying to follow everybody around. There. Oh, they're down there next to next to um, Jeffrey. Um, Miss Sullivan, Shane, um, I wanted to, um, I, wa I asked for Miss Georgia because I wanted to thank her for the effort that I know her and a number of the team have gone in to do this. But I'll ask through you and you might, I don't know if you're that close to it, but I'll give it a go. Um, the, the timelines for bringing um, this in, we've got a workshop in February. Um, what would the milestones be to actually have a committee sitting? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, after if the council was of a mind to progress a committee structure under part 20 of the um, code of meeting practice, it would be necessary after that February discussion to amend the code of meeting practice and place the code of meeting practice on public exhibition. That would take at least six to 10 weeks to go through that process. So that would take you through in all reality through uh, to April, May. May, yeah. And so that's if things go well, keep going, sorry. And, and then um, the council could implement that committee structure from there once the code of meeting practice was adopted after public exhibition. And with the structure that, that, that's being, you know, some of the options considered, and this is where maybe Sarah would do well, um, is um, one of my colleagues just said um, it can be dealt with and considered the issue before it comes back to the chamber. But my experience with these committees of the whole, um, it doesn't ever come back to the chamber. Is that correct, Ms uh, Sullivan? Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, it depends on what delegations the committee have. I think it's important to distinguish committee of the whole is a type of committee. It's a committee which is made up of all councillors and it everything that the committee of the whole determines is a recommendation that is recommended to council when it forms itself back into the formal council meeting. Other committees under part 20 of the code of meeting practice are committees that may or may not have delegation. Um, in the report, there's examples of delegations. If the committee has a delegation, it can act to make decisions within those delegations. Okay. No committee of council can have a delegation um, beyond what is provided for in section 377 of the Local Government Act. Can you help me how many committees have we got at the moment? We have no committees under part 20 of the Code of no, Meeting just, Practice. No, I didn't ask that. How many committees have we got 
um, at the oh. moment. Sarah can answer that for you. <laughs> Advisory she's got, I think we've got yeah, about she's 21. Got, I, I gave her the question before. Thank you. So 21. And, and last time I checked, they cost in the order of half a million dollars a year to, to, to affect those committees. Would I be reasonable in that recollection? Uh, you, you may well be. That's subject of another report um, or it's a but, notation. Councillor Best, but, I really do think it's important to distinguish. It is different. Yes, they are different. Report are part 20 committees. But my question is going to that, and that is that these committees, um, uh, they would be very similar to the rigour of this very meeting we're sitting in right now. The costs of these committees, um, would they not be uh, similar costs to this committee? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, in the report, it's highlighted that the cost of running a committee would be similar to running a council meeting. It would mm -hmm. only be an additional cost if the committees didn't mm -hmm. have delegation. If the committees had delegation, it could be assumed that it would take away some effort from these meetings. And Ms Sullivan, as you are, you are, are some long-term veteran and myself, knows that when we get to the end of this council in September 2021, on the 4th of September, what happens to all the committees then? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, any committee established under Part 20 of the Code of Meeting Practice would continue to operate. At, into the new council, I believe they were all dissolved at, and then they would be started again. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, that's not correct. They would continue because they've been established under the Code of Meeting Practice. Oh, well, I'll, I'll have that discussion with you later on. Um, but thank you very much for your view on that. If I may, Madam Mayor, do you want me to have a right of reply? No, because I have a question okay. first you. from Councillor Gale. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Question through you, if I may, through to the mover of the amendment, Councillor Smith. Councillor Smith, the only the, the question I have is, do you think it's fair um, that we ask that should, so should your amendment get through, you, we've essentially um, made a, a really big choice here for the next councillors coming in, um, committee of the, the whole versus smaller committees, and then we're essentially pushing those costs onto the next round of councillors for their term. Do you think it's fair that we are taking over that responsibility that they don't get to have that say? Um, Councillor Gale, the motion at the moment is just about investigating options. The committees that you're referring to are just one option. In Lake Macquarie, they probably replace other council meetings. So I'm not sure that it's an additional cost, but um, that's probably more for Lake Mac to, um, to um, clarify in terms of the, the frequency and the schedule of committee meetings changes um, and perhaps reduces the number of ordinary council meetings that you have. It may not end up being additional, but that's just one. I mean, you're very fixated on the committee idea, but that we're, what we're talking about governance models. Um, and certainly I think it's healthy for councils to review their governance models, um, especially if they're not working as well as they could. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Councillors, we've, I'm dealing with the amendment. So, um, so we've had, Two, we've had many for, one against. Did anybody want to speak, I suppose, against the amendment? And then I can, no? Okay, well, I will put the amendment now, which is an amendment moved by Councillor Smith and seconded by Councillor Vincent. All those in favour of the amendment, please raise your hand. So Councillor Matthews, Councillor Hogan, Councillor Greenaway, Councillor Mertens, Councillor Smith, Councillor Sundstrom, Councillor Vincent, all those against? Councillor Best, Councillor Marquette, Councillor Gale, Councillor McLaughlin, Councillor Pillen, Councillor Holstein, Councillor Burke. The amendment is carried. Amendment becomes a motion. Councillors, all those in favour of the motion, please raise your hand. Councillor Matthews, Councillor Hogan, Councillor Greenway, Councillor Mertens, Councillor Smith, Councillor Sundstrom, Councillor Vincent, all those against? Councillor Best, Councillor Marquette, Councillor Gale, Councillor McLaughlin, Councillor Pillen, Councillor Holstein, Councillor Burke. I declare the motion carried. Thank you, councillors. We'll now move on to item 3.2. I understand councillors Holstein and Smith. Do we have Councillor Smith? Did you have, did you want to move it? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I will move it. And I um, did just have a, uh, an additional um, number of motions um, that I was hoping 
council would support going to the local government New South Wales. And my understanding is that there may be other councillors that also have motions that they wish to be considered to be submitted to LGNSW conference. So the staff have my wording. Um, I'm not sure if they've got other wording as well. Oh, there they are. Um, so Madam Mayor, um, I'll just see if I've, uh, we do need to put names in That's the right. um, motion. So I'll, I'll second the motion and then I will, just before we go to anything else, um, yeah, we need to put some names. So, so far we have Councillor Smith. Um, I'll go myself, Councillor Matthews, Councillor Greenaway, Councillor Sundstrom. Um, bear in mind this will be a virtual meeting and it'll be about, Half a day. Councillor Hogan, Councillor Burke. We have one space for one more. Is anybody dying to come along? Councillor Merton, thank you. Okay, um, noting that Councillor Smith has put some of her motions there. Are there anybody? Councillor Sundstrom also has a motion. Councillor Sunstrom, does staff have your motion? Yep. Um, staff, if you can add Councillor Sunstrom. Did any other councillor have any motions that they wanted to add? All right, I'll leave you some time, I guess. Councillor Smith, did you want to start speaking and councillors can digest? Uh, sure, Madam Mayor. Um, look, thank you for that. Um, I'll, I'll just speak to the two motions that I'm putting up. I have no objection to the other motions that appear on the screen, so I'm happy for those to be as part of the motion. Uh, but certainly the two motions that I have are about calling on local government New South Wales and councils around the state to uh, come together in a effort or advocacy to support the um, funding and independence of the uh, New South Wales Independent Commission Against Corruption, uh, but also lobbying uh, through ALGA, the Australian Local Government Association for the Establishment of a Federal um, Anti-Corruption Commission. So I do just want to speak briefly to that. Um, certainly the motions, those motions are not about any particular level of government or any particular party. Um, they are about the integrity of our democracy. So we know that institutions such as ICAC are important, not only because they ensure accountability, transparency and good governance, but they also build confidence and trust within our community. Uh, a number of organisations advocate uh, for strengthening these institutions. One is Transparency International and another is the Centre for Public Integrity. Both of them have highlighted the need to strengthen these entities. So Transparency International ranks countries' perceived corruption levels based on uh, perceptions. And since 2012, Australia has slipped in the rankings in terms of perceptions of um, integrity and corruption in our systems. Um, over recent years, um, ICAC has come under sustained pressure from government. Uh, those attacks have come in many forms, but include weakening powers or jurisdiction and also funding cuts. So New South Wales ICAC has faced ongoing budget cuts and restrictions. In 2019, their budget dropped by 10%. Um, ICAC staffing levels are at near record lows. And this is despite the fact that the number of matters received by ICAC has climbed from 2,500 to around about 2,700 in the last two financial years. At a federal le level, there's no integrity commission. So no agency has the power to investigate corrupt con conduct no agency can investigate misconduct of MPs, ministers, political staff, or the judiciary. So it is critical for our democracy, for our integrity, that we have strong independent entities that can uh, provide oversight and investigation of those matters. Um, so this motion is asking about local government New South Wales to bring together councils that are concerned about the integrity in our systems and democracies. Hopefully that's something all of our councillors, all 15 councillors and all councillors across the state um, will support and can agree with. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Gall, I have a question from you. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'm not sure if this one is to you, count through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Smith, or if it was Councillor Sundstrom. It's just a bottom point. Can I get some clarification? So it says, call on uh, local government New South Wales to note concerns around impropriety and conflicts of interest that prevent developers from standing for election at local government level in New South Wales and investigate if there are other industries that should also be excluded from running for election at local government level. Can I get some, what was the intent around that particular point? I have no issue with the rest of them, the, um, the points that have added in there. They all make sense to me. Just would like some clarification around the intent of that last point. Uh, whoever put that in, was it Councillor Smith or Councillor Sundstrom? I'm not Councillor sure. Councillor Sundstrom it was. Councillor thank Sundstrom. You, Madam Mayor. Yes, thank you, uh, Councillor Gale. Happy to have the opportunity to um, expand on what these um, suggestions um, entail. So the first one, the uh, local government New South Wales notes that due to concerns around impropriety and conflict of interest, developers are currently already prohibited from standing for local government in New South Wales. The second point, that uh, local government New South Wales investigates what other industries, occupations or interests, particularly those associated with and reliant on development, may be considered to be a conflict of interest in the same way that being a developer is considered so currently. So <clears throat> that one's around, you, you might note that whenever we uh, have discussions around conflict of interest, that some councillors are not sure, they're unsure about what their position is, whether it's a pecuniary interest or whether it's uh, a non-pecuniary interest or whether it's significant or whether it's not significant. So <sighs> this is a, a, a broad, um, suggestion to local government New South Wales. You see, uh, it also notes what interests. Um, I'm hoping that it would give some guidance to councillors that are unsure about whether their uh, conflict of interest should keep them out of the room or bring them back into the room. And um, if it's a matter that's of such uh, gravity, it might be a matter that means that they should not be putting their hand up to be a councillor. Um, does that give you any more clarity? Councillor Gale? You, oh. Thank you for your patience, Madam Mayor. We haven't <laughs> had a real moment there, but we work together. So, yeah. um, so Councillor Sundstrom, there's not a particular industry that you're looking at. You're just leaving it wide open for debate and putting it back on local government New South Wales to to assess what they think is could have a conflict. Is that correct? Uh, There's no specific the, industry that you're that you're targeting. You're just saying industries as a whole. I'm just saying that currently we have developers that are uh, already uh, prohibited. That probably gives us a bit of a model to work off. And I want it to be opened up to look at what other industries or interests it doesn't have to be an occupation. Um, that people have that may put them in a position of conflict. And I'll be happy to take guidance from local government New South Wales on, um, you know, giving us a, a stronger framework for councils to be certain that they're on steady ground and not putting themselves at risk or, um, or, or taking themselves out of a conversation unnecessarily. Okay, satisfied. Um, Councillor McGregor. Thank you. Apologies for my internet connection. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but um, hopefully you can hear me. I, I had a question. Mm -hmm. um, I missed the, the start of this where you put the names up. So I understand we're not having a, a physical conference this year, but I just had a question to staff. If they were going to have any of the training courses or any of those things, if people who aren't delegates, if there was some way that um, if those do go ahead virtually, if we could get other councillors to participate in that because it counts, it usually counts towards our professional development. So if there are training courses with the conference, I'd like to know if we can participate in them. Um, Miss Sullivan. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, absolutely we'll keep councillors informed of what is the offering for this year's conference um, and what might be ancillary activities, noting that it is provided for in the councillor expenses and facilities policy. Thank you. Thank you, 
Um, I have Councillor Marquette. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just just a question um, to the to the mover and the seconder, uh, especially with the new wording. Um, and then after the question, I might I might speak to it or I might not, depending on the answer. Uh, just wanted to know of the movers, would they would you consider moving that removing that last point um, that Councillor Gale just um, questioned Councillor Sundstrom on? Would they consider removing that point? Because I'd be happy to vote for the rest if they would. Uh, Councillor Marquette, I don't have any basis to remove it. Um, is there a particular reason that you wanted to remove it? I'd, I think it, uh, to be to be blunt, I think it makes a little bit make us looks a little bit inept as a, as an organisation. I mean, Councillor Sunstrom just struggled to to say what he really felt. I think it's it's not just an attack. Like we're not looking for meat workers here or hairdressers. The secret was in a little bit of wording there when he said things around development. So we're talking about real estate agents. Uh, we've got one of them on our council right here. Um, so I'll be I'll be the one to be, um, call a spade a spade. That's exactly what that is. And it's it's an, it's an attack on an, a particular profession. I don't think we need to. There's going to be other real estate agents, guys, that um, that are going to be at this event. Um, obviously, it's virtually they'll be there, but they'll be there because they're on other councils. So, um, if obviously it's not going to be removed, so I'll go ahead and just quickly speak against it for that reason. Um, I think if we're going to if we're going to put particular points in, and I'm happy to um, to support the rest of the points, um, we need to be able to back them up with um, some some good words, some good reasons. We need to look intelligent. We need to look like we're uh, we're going to these particular things for reasons. Um, I really don't think we should be putting any points like that in there where we're trying to to pull up. Um, we're trying to say we're trying to we're trying to do it in, in the gutless way in the, to, because I haven't got a better word there that I can use. I apologise. We're trying to do it in a way where we want to have attack at, an attack at certain people. We want to have an attack at certain professions, but we want to do it under the banner of just whacking it onto the um, the local government conference. Um, so if you want to say things like that, say it yourself. If you want to have an attack, attack on particular professions, do it yourself. We've already got the reasons that already um, exist around there. Developers aren't allowed to be on councils. Fine, that's the way it is. Um, we don't need to be, a, as, as a council, attacking um, real estate agents. I think it's ridiculous. That's exactly what this is. Um, and I don't think it does us any favours by taking that particular last point um, to any local government conference. Um, I would again ask if, if that one could be removed, but if it can't, I'll be voting against it. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Marquette. Councillor McLaughlin, you have a question? Uh, yes, thanks. Um, th thanks very much, Jeff. We've been through this before. When, I, when, we first, when I first got elected, within a couple of weeks, I was at the first local government association and we saw this emotion go up with an amendment that said developers can't can't run for a council. I couldn't run for council if I didn't meet the criteria. I'm not a developer. I'm actually an estate agent or a local business person. We've been through all this before. Environmental lawyers, town planners, uh, surveyors, all those people there have much more involvement in the DA process than, than someone in my profession that sells the ongoing end result. But I'm happy for you to put it in and happy to have, have a cheap shot. It was a cheap shot the first time round. And, um, you know, by all means, go there, put it on the floor, make an amendment there to say no real estate agents. I don't mind. You know, if that's the best you, could, if that's the best you can do to get rid of me, go for it. But, um, you know, so, uh, you know, real estate agents on the floor round two, as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, it's a cheap shot. And, uh, you know, if you've, got a, if you've got a problem, come and speak to me directly. Thank you, Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor Greenaway. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just was hoping that staff might be able to confirm. I know um, ideally we would have all had our motions ready tonight, but we can have them, I think, as long as it's by resolution, we can have them by next by the next meeting as well and still be within time to get them to the local government conference. That could just be confirmed. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, um, the critical dates are in the report. From what I understand, we have until the end of September for Council to resolve the motions for inclusion or submission to the Local Government New South Wales Conference. Okay, so I probably will do that in a future business paper. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hostin, I note that you um, did call it. So did you want to speak 
or add anything? Yeah, I'll add, so I'll add something. I only started because when I read through the report, we still do, still needed to have the nomination. So I only marked it procedurally. Um, a little concerned about the debate uh, that's just gone through, um, that a couple of our councillors feel that they're personally attacking another one. I don't read that in there. Um, I don't have a difficulty with it. Uh, I have no difficulty in, in Bruce's explanation about what he does and how he does it. I don't see that as being a conflict of interest. And he's quite correct. He wouldn't be here on council if they thought there was a conflict. Um, so um, I don't know whether uh, Councillor Sunstrom would like to clarify any amendment that is put to this at the, um, at the conference, doesn't matter what's put up. Um, somebody wants to then change it. That's not this, what this council is resolving. This council is resolving to uh, around those improprieties, conflicts of interest that prevent developers from standing. You know what other industries that could be excluded, could be or should be. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't see it as a personal attack on real estate agents and and Bruce. He meets his criteria. He does what he needs to do as a councillor. And I don't have a conflict there. I don't see it being that way. If there's something underlying here, well, I'm ignorant of it. I don't know what they're trying to, but I thought it was a fair question and I don't have a problem with the motion as it is. Um, it, it just concerns me. It shows the pettiness that times we have in this council and the concerns we get and some of the snipe mar remarks back. Not good, not professional, Philly school... Uh, yard amateurish. The motion doesn't uh, indicate what might be other industries. And as I said, I don't read that into it. I don't think Councillor McLaughlin should worry about it. Um, it's something for consideration. So uh, just those comments, it, it just amazes how we can take an assumption and we draw all types of comparisons with it just to win some, um, to, to win some, some angst and grief and further erode this ability that we should have to work together. It just a major concern, but it is what it is, Madam Mayor. We move on. Thank you, Councillor Holstein. Councillor Burke. Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, I've been a councillor for 13 years. Uh, I was a real estate agent for eight of those years, for eight years. Um, and it's been brought up at the last 13 meetings and always been thrown out. Um, all, all I can say is it's it's not the first time it's been brought up. It's been brought up over about 13 years that I know and it'll be thrown out again. So I wouldn't worry about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. There are no further questions, comments. So therefore, Councillor Smith, write a reply. No, councillors, I'll therefore put the motion moved by Councillor Smith, second by myself. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Matthews, Councillor Hogan, Councillor Greenway, Councillor Mertens, Councillor Smith, Councillor Holstein, Councillor Sundstrom, Councillor Vincent, Councillor McGregor, all those against. Councillor Best, Councillor Gale, Councillor Marquette, Councillor Pillon, Councillor Burke. I declare the motion carried. Thank you, councillors. Um, item 3.3, .3, I believe Councillor Smith, you have... Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, there is some wording that was sent through to the staff. Uh, so, sorry, we're on... Um, 3.3. 3.3, is that yep, correct? 3.3, okay. the grant funding update. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, look, just uh, wanted to just make a minor change to the recommendation or the motion. Um, that just we request that when we get these quarterly reports in relation to funding, that we also get an update on uh, federal and state election promises. We have previously asked for that, and it has been provided, uh, but we didn't have that. We uh, we didn't have a request to get that report on a regular basis. So that's what this motion would seek to do. So I will move that way, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Do I have a second for Councillor Smith, Councillor Holstein? Thank you. Councillor Holstein, you had your hand up to speak, I think. Did you have a question? No, I'm just seconding the motion. Again, I agree with Councillor, just to say, I agree with Councillor Smith. We were going to get those updates to see how those election promises, that was a one-off. This just ensures that this is now going to be uh, consistent, that we'll get that information back. We need to know what's being committed. Thank you, Councillor Holstein. Yep, I was just going to say, does anybody want to speak for it? Uh, that would be Councillor McGregor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I support this. I think it's quite straightforward. 
Um, one other aspect that I think is important, which isn't included in the motion, but would be helpful if it was included in the updates on the promises is a breakdown by ward. Um, and that should not only be for the federal and state elections, um, but it should also be for all grants because we have discovered that there is a trend where certain parts of the central coast are favored over others. So it would be important to see if that was a one-off trend or if that was something that's continuing to highlight that to the community where funding is going. Um, other aspects which would be important with the grants to take stock of would be the percentage of funding, whether they're straight up grants which are purely paid for by state or federal government, or if these are 50-50 grants or the like. Um, and I think the, the, the final thing that needs to be taken into consideration, and it's something that we have discussed before, but I'm not sure we've really gotten to the bottom of is with the grants which we're getting knocked back for is it as some people would cynically believe that it's on a political basis or is it maybe because that there isn't quite enough resourcing going into applying for the right grants or the quality of the grants and the like and I think that's a really important issue that this council has to get on top of and has to actually seriously investigate so there are a couple of extra points which I'm not going to try and move an amendment to spell out but I think they're things that are pertinent to the issue of grants and pertinent to this debate. And I would assume that all councillors would like that information. If they don't, maybe they don't, but I think it's very important that we get that. So I'd request, um, you know, unofficially or informally tonight, that when we do get these further updates on grants, that those issues are taken into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Are there any further speakers either for or against? Is that is that a hand up? Councillor Holstein, thank you. Councillor yeah, Holstein. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a clarification. Councillor McGregor didn't agree with didn't disagree with some of the things he said, but he did point out um, per ward. Did he mean per electorate, state electorate or federal electorate? Or did he actually mean per local government ward? He did say wards, and uh, I don't think that's what he meant. No, I think he said wards. Um, to respond to that, I, I did mean wards specific to the council, but they do largely reflect, reflect certain federal and state electorates, and I think that's also part of the, the background discussion. So if that was something that would be a, a way to assess it, I'm happy for it to be that way, whether it's ward or federal or state electorate doesn't bother me too much. Thank you. I'm sure staff are hearing... Uh, Mr. Murphy, what we're, yes, thumbs up. Thank you. Um, there are no fur further speakers for or against. Therefore, uh, right of reply, Councillor Smith, no. Councillors, I'll now put the motion moved by Councillor Smith, second by Councillor Holstein, the grant funding update to 3.3. .3. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Uh, that's unanimous. Thank you, Councillors. Councillors, we move on to item 3.4, policy related to the environment and planning. And I believe Councillor Smith. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, sorry, is that the one that we're looking at? Three point, oh yes, 3 .4. it is, sorry. Yep, yep. Uh, so thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a, an amendment or an alternate motion. Um, so support the staff recommendation in revoking uh, the in the two policies, incentives for iconic development and the um, submissions policy. Um, I would like to refer two of the policies to the relevant advisory committees um, just for their consideration. And in terms of the matters in the Land and Environment Court policy, um, my motion is seeking that we actually review that policy um, and come up with a, a policy that has a similar intention in terms of clarifying um, some delegations in regard to that, but also making sure that councillors are aware of um, what matters councillors involved in before the court. So um, I will move that way, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Smith, Councillor McLaughlin suggesting an amendment. Are you happy to listen to what he has to say and maybe you could maybe... Uh, yeah, look, I'm happy to hear. Before, yes. And then he may second it. So Councillor McLaughlin, fire away. Um, Yes, thanks. Look, just looking at it quickly, and it's just off the top of my head. Um, when we when we decided to do the key sites policy, that was a, that was a, a finalisation of a previous policy that hadn't gone anywhere, and that was pre-COVID. And I think what we've got now is a, is a totally different financial situation that we actually need to um, look at look at trying to kickstart some some sites and and that sort of thing. So what I would like to like you to consider. 
was to actually also send that down to the advisory committee as well. And there may be something that we can resurrect from that from that policy because it had did have some good things in it, but there was a lot of sites and I understand they didn't go anywhere. Um, but but some of that too is GSC, finance, market, all that sort of thing there. It wasn't actually so much the policy. So instead of just throwing all the all the good work that that was gone into out the door, can we can we have the advisory committee have a look at that again? And there may be a couple of sites there that that um, could be resurrected. Certainly, the entrance could do with with um, uh, some initiatives and that sort of thing. Uh, some hotel site we spoke about that in the development uh, economic uh, development Mayor, board. Um, yeah. We are just getting into debate there. <laughs> I, I don't accept that um, change, Councillor McLaughlin. Um, you know, that, that matter has already been discussed by the advisory committee. Um, my understanding is the planning ability to do that is no longer current um, and the iconic sites policy didn't actually deliver. Um, so certainly in a depressed market, it would be difficult to see how it would um, improve the situation at the moment. Um, so, so I don't accept that. I'm assuming you'll probably move an amendment, but um, I'll, be moving, I'll be okay, moving well, the motion that I've got on the floor. Okay, so Councillor Smith, you're moving that. Do I have a seconder for Councillor Smith? No, seconder for Councillor Smith, Councillor McGregor. So now Council, so there, that's there. Councillor McLaughlin, you're gonna move an amendment. So what would your amendment look well, like? Well, I will just open debate first, oh, okay, sorry, Madam okay. Mayor. <laughs> Um, so, so, look, as I just so said... I was move, hang on, was I, am I allowed no, to move it? No, it's all right. No, I get to open debate first. Let, yes, you can open debate and then I'll come back to you. Sorry. Yeah, so, so, again, I would just reinforce that the iconic sites policy has been considered. It was considered by the um, advisory committee um, and council has already resolved, um, I thought, not to continue that or not to extend those timeframes. Um, so I, I don't think it's appropriate that that policy be continued. I would suggest that um, with respect that Council McLaughlin wants to do something, it needs to be a separate motion because um, we've already got a resolution, I thought, in regards to the iconic sites that that not be extended. Um, in terms of the other policies, I, I do think the, um, the natural hazards and the creeks, rivers and lagoons one does merit some consideration by the Estuary Management Committee since it's directly related to them. I note the staff's comments that the legislation defines certain parameters around those matters. Um, however, as with other policies, Council can consider um, you know, um, improving on those legislative uh, requirements potentially. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll leave it there. As seconder, Council McGregor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I'm, I'm happy to support Councillor Smith's um, resolution as it is. I think it's important that the advisory committees review um, what's happening with the, the ones where they have specialist knowledge over that we haven't um, had at those committees before. The key sites policy has been discussed at the economics committee and it's also been discussed internally and externally at council. And it's clear that it was nothing more than an abject failure on both an economic and a planning basis. It didn't deliver any of the outcomes that it sought to achieve. We've got a long track record of seeing that it doesn't work. It's a zombie. It doesn't need to be revived. It doesn't need to be brought back into the open. We need to try and find new policies that are going to stimulate appropriate development and economic growth and not revisit things that have a track record of failure. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Now, Councillor McLaughlin, you can move an amendment. You need to unmute. There you go. Okay, I think the amendment's there. It just says the incentives uh, go to, to the advisory committee. I think sometimes we do a lot of work and then we throw it out the door. Um, I think that you know why not? It's a change. It's a change financial environment. Uh, all that all that talk about the key sites and an abject failure was done before COVID, and now we've got a, a, a massive catch up on trying to stimulate the economy. And what we've got here is a, a policy that is trying to stimulate some key sites. Now it may be that you 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 come back and you pick one or two or three key sites out of the form of policy and that may be something that could get things going i certainly think the entrance needs something actually um, council mclaughlin before you're now speaking to the motion mm. um i need a seconder for your amendment 
Councillor Pillen, now you can speak to it. My apologies. Yeah. That's okay. I think it, we, we've discussed it many times what's needed for the entrance and, and I don't think anyone would argue that uh, some, may, uh, some major hotel or some major uh, project down, down there would, would be, uh, you know, a significant change for the, for the economics of that, of that little, uh, tourist um, area. So I think, you know, rather than just throw the baby out with the bathwater, it, um, why don't we look at it? Why, why not just, why not just have another, another look at it and see what we can resurrect? It's, it's not, not going to cost us anything it um and there may be something that we can get out of it so you know that in my view i mean we did make those resolutions were all made pre-covid and and now it's post-covid and we've got to make some different different resolutions so i would ask you to, to reconsider it thank you thank you councillor pillan the seconder to the amendment Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, I fully support this amendment. Um, I was going to, to go against it if, if we didn't amend it. Um, as Councillor McLaughlin stated, it's a, it's a different era, different times. The business chamber at the entrance, I could not support. I know, I understand that we were voted down previously. I tried to uh, extend the iconic sites previously and it was uh, knocked back, but we are in a different time looking at fresh ideas I uh, can't see any reason why we can't send it to the advisory committee again and maybe people may be more on board with it this time. I know that would be supported by the entrance business chamber, as Councillor McLaughlin said. The entrance, as one example, is an area that would be supportive of this. And look, time is, is a big factor and some of the developers may not have been in a position to be able to, to develop their sites previously. Uh, we've got very low interest rates at the moment, so it may be a time that they now could if they've got that opportunity. So I fully support the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pillan. Um, I have a question of uh, Director Cox. Um, they're talking about the Iconics and uh, initiative and the, the, on the key sites. Um, it's correct that we did, we abandoned that policy or we gave up on it. Um, so can you please explain how we could then continue with it? And it's not just about the entrance. So how many sites were listed on the iconic site. So we're not just talking about the, the entrance here, are we? Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think there was over, just over 30 iconic sites, Maybe 33 or 35 rings a bell, but I'd, I'd have to take it on nose for the exact number. Um, it's quite a few. I, I suppose that, that there's a, a number of things here. On its own, the the, the policy is, is sterile because it relies on a clause in the former wire in the current Wyong local environmental plan, um, and that clause uh, lapsed on December in December 2018. Um, I suppose to to uh, to have any effect, um, the for, for the policy uh, a planning proposal would need to be um, submitted to change that clause in the uh, Wyong LEP to to change the date um, to make that policy effective or alternatively that clause gets inserted into the draft um, consolidated LEP to give uh, that policy any effect at this point in time. So really what you're saying is by going to an advisory committee meeting, it's not as simple as starting it up again. It's, it's probably going to be time. It, it, you would need to, to amend the LEP to give it some effect, but uh, it depends on the purpose. If it's the intention to resurrect and to consolidate maybe half a dozen of those um, sites, because as Councillor McLaughlin's correct, there are some sites identified in those iconic sites that potentially could, um, you know, that, that uh, have merit for redevelopment. Um, but was, was never, never, no applications were ever, ever lodged. And if it's gone through a proper master planning process through those um, for some of those sites, but that's a whole new piece of work that, you know, is, takes time to develop, but it wouldn't resurrect that policy on its own. So just picked up on your point, under the iconic sites, which it was former Wyong, mm. nobody commenced anything, did they, on any of those sites? From memory, I'm not aware of any. I know that there was two approvals granted for the entrance, um, but those two, I, I think there's been physical commencement established for the lakeside site, but it's just been for demolition work um, and maybe some investments, uh, engineering work, but no, there hasn't been a, um, a new shopping centre or, or the hotel built yet. And my last question to you, 
Has there been any knocks at the door or picking up of the phone to ask the this um, policy be revitalised um, and are people saying that they're ready to actually do something now at the entrance or any of these other sites? Um, me personally, no, but, but I can't speak on behalf of the particularly my former staff, strategic planning, um, they, may, they may have fielded some inquiries and um, I'm not sure with the, whether Mr Martello has um, um, in, in, in the last month or whatnot has fielded any inquiries about extending that. Okay, thank you. Councillors, I have no further... Uh, anybody, does anybody else want to speak for or against any of the two motions that are there. No, therefore I will put the amendment, if no, if we have no further, no, okay. Um, councillors, I'll, I'll therefore put the amendment as moved by Council McLaughlin um, and second by Councillor Pill. And all those in favour of the amendment, please raise your hand. Councillor, Councillor Best, Councillor Marquette, Councillor Gale, Councillor McLaughlin, Councillor Pill and Councillor Burke, all those against, please raise your hand. Councillor Matthews, Councillor Hogan, Councillor Greenway, Councillor Mertens, Councillor Smith, Councillor Sunstrom, Councillor Vincent, Councillor McGregor. Sorry, I'm going to, I'm, Councillor Holston, I'm not sure where you went with that and I don't believe I actually called your name. So I, sorry. You called me, one of the As initials a, called me in favour of in favor. I okay, the you. amendment at this point in time. No, right, it's not going to get up. No, therefore the amendment did not get up. Um, so it's back to the original motion. Write a reply, Councillor Smith. No, Councillor, I'll therefore put the motion as moved by Councillor Smith, second by Councillor McGregor. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Matthews, Councillor Hogan, Councillor Greenaway, Councillor Mertens, Councillor Smith, Councillor Sunstrom, Councillor Vincent, Councillor McGregor. All those against. Councillor Pillen, Councillor Best, Councillor Gale, Councillor McLaughlin, Councillor Marquette and Councillor Burke, I therefore declare the motion carried. Thank you, councillors. Okay, councillors, I'm now moving on to item 3.5 and it's the Environment and Planning Directorate's draft policies for community consultation. I note Councillor Smith... Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just, uh, sorry, uh, on the wrong one. Um, look, I just wanted to remove part four. I wanted the um, the policies to come back to council for adoption after the exhibition period. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for Councillor Smith, Councillor McGregor? Councillor Smith, did you want to speak to it? No. No. Councillor McGregor, did you want to speak to it? No. Anybody want to speak against it? No hands. Councillors, I'll therefore write a reply, Councillor Smith. No. Therefore, Councillors, I'll now put the motion moved by Councillor Smith, second by Councillor McGregor. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Um, unanimous. Thank you, Councillors. Moving on to item um, 3.6, uh, Councillors role in planning matters. I believe that Councillor Smith, you had your name on that. You have an amendment. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, an alternate motion. So um, it is up on the screen. Basically, it um, it requests it, it requests that we just review the policy after twelve months to see if it's um, working effectively or if it needs to be um, changed in some way. Um, it also um, just adds the part four. Um, which is um, in, in the report, uh, there was some discussion about if councillors wanted um, staff to prepare a submission on behalf of council on a DA or a planning matter that the community was concerned about. Um, the report indicated that that would involve a cost um, and that council didn't currently have the resources. So the part four just requests that uh, we get a further report from the CEO for an estimate of that cost and that we um, consider, um, and it's not saying we would do it or not, but that we consider it as part of a Q1 budget review if there was support for that. Um, so that's just by way of explanation, Madam Mayor. So yep. if I've got a second. Do I have a seconder for this motion? Councillor McGregor, speak to your motion, Councillor Smith. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, look, I'd like to thank staff for their work in preparing this policy on how councillors can continue to represent their community in planning matters. And um, I know there, you know, there's always lots of comments about planning powers and state government taking them away. I think it's uh, it's been uh, really um, terrible for our community. Um, that council is no longer uh, fulfilling their role in representing the community in planning the future of the Central Coast in many avenues. That doesn't mean we don't have a responsibility to our community to represent their interests in planning. And so this is what this policy will do. Um, it does outline some uh, ways in which we can do that in terms of preparing submissions to the local planning panel um, and also councillors being able to speak at the planning panel um, you know, with seven, 72 hours notice. And I, I also thank the chair of the local planning panel who I assume has agreed to that and um, worked with staff to make to ensure that there is that opportunity for representation. So, um, so I see it as um, a positive. It certainly doesn't replace um, the fact that council should be the consent authority, but it does give an avenue to represent the community's interest. Um, I think we do want to review it in 12 months and see if it does meet our needs, the community's needs as well. Um, and it may be changed in some way then when we also review the local planning panel at that point in time. Um, and lastly, um, I am concerned if there is a limitation on councils requesting our staff to um, provide a submission on some of those matters that are contentious. And I guess I, you know, I remember the um, boarding house at Tukley that Councillor Best brought into the chamber and the amount of time and effort that councillors and staff spent in um, considering that matter. You know, there was also a matter down at Woi Woi um, that the community was very concerned about and council made a point of considering that and making a recommendation to the planning panel. So I think we do have an important role um, and we should, investigate how we might uh, resource that if it is required and it's not going to be required that often uh, but if there is sufficient concern within the community and council resolves that way there should be the ability for us to um, request staff to prepare a submission from council. Thank you Madam Mayor. Thank you Council Smith. Council McGregor a second did you want to speak to the motion? Uh, I, I think that um, Deputy Mayor Smith summarised it I've got nothing further to add thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bess, you have a question? No, no question. Councillor Gale, you have a question. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, question through you, if I may, please, through to CEO, Mr. Gary Murphy. Um, Mr. Murphy, the question that I have is just with regards to point four um, of this particular motion. Generally, with our business papers now, we're seeing a, a response from yourself and staff with regards to any foreseeable complications. So I guess my question is, do can you, before we go ahead and vote, is there any foreseeable legal, strategic, economic concerns with regards to point four? Thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Gale, I think um, if item four is uh, adopted by council, it requires a further report on options and, and costings. I think uh, Mr. Cox has previously uh, raised with councillors the challenge of council staff providing um, that advice. And I think that's why Councillor Smith has put forward uh, the option of an independent uh, consultant. Uh, I don't have uh, an idea at this stage of what that likely cost uh, to the organisation might be. I don't know if um, Mr. Cox has, has got an idea, but certainly that would come back in the um, in the report to council. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Um, so through you, Madam Mayor, just to Director Cox. Director Cox, do you have any idea on what that potential costing could be? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Gale, um, just as a rough estimate, if you're going to engage an independent consultant to to draft a submission on behalf of councillors, it could be, you know, from it depends on how how big the development is um, and the complexity of it. It could be anywhere from five thousand dollars to twenty five thousand um, dollars. If you're looking at a full time uh, staff member to 
say, work out of the, the, the governance unit that is independent from the development assessment unit. So um, there is a separation from, from the normal development assessment team, which would be doing the independent assessment of the application. Um, if you're looking at in, employing a, a staff member full time in that, you would probably be looking at a senior uh, town planner. Um, and for a senior town planner, you're probably looking somewhere in the range of between eighty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars a year plus plus on costs. Thank you, Director Cox. Councillor Gail, did you want to? Okay, you're fine. Councillor Best, now you have a question. Um, thank you. Can you hear me? All right. I can. Good. Thank you. Um, look, we we seem to get a lot of these um motions on the run here and. As Councillor Gale just outlined, we've um, we have staff giving us some commentary about some of the implications of our motions. But when you do it like this, you can't get your head around it. Um, Mr. Cox, if I could ask yourself, we this is this is to provide uh, an effort to have more communications with the planning panel. That's how I read this on my screen in the, in the last few minutes. What's our current ability to communicate with the planning panel? And what representation have we got on the planning panel? What's our voice like on it now? And correct uh, me if I'm wrong, if it's just, if it's not just about the planning panel. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best. I, I suppose the, the, the opportunity for councillors um, is to, that they could request a report um, come to council uh, once it's been sent to the panel. Um, the, the timing of that was very difficult in terms of um, uh, get, getting, getting a response uh, back to the panel before the panel determined it. So no, no different to the way the former Wyon Council did with the, um, the, the regional planning panels where it would go to council just the report after it was sent and council had the opportunity to put a response um, or make a submission. Who do the we only... have on this panel? Sorry? Who do we have on this panel? Do... In terms of? From council. There, there, there are no councillors on the local There's nobody panel. on it? No. Okay. No. Well, that's what I wasn't sure of what this, yeah. what this is referring to. Yeah. yeah. This, the, okay. the staff worked with the, with this the, the new um, panel. With, with yeah. the chair and sought some concessions in terms of yeah. allowing councillors to, 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 to make, you know, independent submissions. Um, or to speak uh, to the panel, um, and, and that's and and also to um, I suppose yeah as you say to to try and um, identify that the, the councillors do have a role in representing the community and um, trying to enable them to have better communication with the panel. Mm. Okay, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Lisa. Councillors. Oh, Councillor West, I'm just. Councillors, oh, just checking. There are there's no further comments in the chat. So does anybody else? Right, Councillor Smith, you may have the right to reply. No, councillors, I'll therefore move uh, the motion as put by as moved. Sorry, I'll therefore put the motion. Move the motion as put by Councillor Smith and Councillor McGregor. All those in favour, please raise your hand. So that's. Councillor Beth, sorry, Councillor Matthews, Councillor Best, Councillor Hogan, Councillor Marquet, Councillor Greenaway, Councillor Mertens, Councillor McLaughlin, Councillor Smith, Councillor Pillen, Councillor Sunstrom, Councillor Vincent, Councillor McGregor, Councillor Holstein, all those against. Councillor Burke, abstentions. Councillor Gale, I declare the motion carried. Thank you, Councillors. Councillors um, 3.8 which is the um, update on the regional library. I'm going to, I know there's an amendment there, but I am going to, I am going to move the staff recommendation. Do I have a seconder for the staff recommendation? Councillor Hogan. I'll just briefly, uh, and I appreciate there is an amendment. So I just op will open the debate on the um, staff recommendation. I appreciate that this matter has been ongoing for some time and we as councillors have been briefed, had opportunity, I think 
as uh, short as four weeks ago to um, make any changes to um, the existing plans. And as a council, we chose to go forward with what we've been presented with. We had a briefing uh, last week in relation to the plans and um, I'm comfortable that um, what we've been um, given is a fair and equitable um, library. It's not just a library, it's a pseudo community facility that will be inviting, it will be there for the community, it will serve as a library, it will also have um, customer service in there and our librarians, it will deliver an opportunity for the community to engage and um, go into a first class library of which Gosford ratepayers, the former Gosford ratepayers have paid a levy for for some time. It's imperative that we continue to um, get this job done. Um, we have milestones that we need to tick off in order to, um, you know, get the funding and any further delays or any going back to any drawing table or any new changes to said plans could in fact put us in for in jeopardy of the funds that we have got. Um, I don't want to see this project held up any longer. Um, I'm believe that the community need the library, they deserve the library, and we need to, in fact, deliver this library. And I will be very pleased um, as Mayor to turn the sod of this library come early next year. So, councillors, I applaud, I, I ask you to, um, to, to, I guess, support the staff recommendation to keep this project moving forward as we know it needs to. Thank you, Councillor Hogan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yeah, I'm in agreement with you. We need to move this project forward. Um, this council has been accused of stalling projects and, and not being able to develop anything in this term. I think this is a very good example where, you know, we got a little bit sidetracked with the RPAC and now we brought it back to something that's achievable, something that the community want and certainly something that the children and the parents want. The... Concept designs are quite innovative. It takes in the community, takes in parents, learning, um, innovation, also you know, councils call business, which is serving their community. And it also takes in a, um, a, a theatre type area where many, many community groups need to uh, perform and to practice. So, and the other exciting thing I liked in the concept plans was the historical room. There's a lot of history around our around our region, and it'd be really nice for for those societies to be able to have some input into that, and to also get some um, some information there. Um, you know, the community, by and large, since this since this council has come in, the amalgamated council, have always asked the question: Well, why have we got two? Civic centres, are we having one? Um, there's, there's general chit chat about selling off Gosford or um, not having meetings at Gosford or let's sell both of them and, and meet somewhere in the middle. So all of those ideas have, have come through, but what we ended up with was COVID and COVID did show us and it has shown many of us and certainly the um, Brady Bunch we look at here that we can work from home. So our offices will be scaled down going into the future. I don't see any doubt in that whatsoever. Um, however, this is an opportunity to deliver a library, not a civic centre. We deliver something for the community, something that they've paid levies for for a very long time. And the bigger decisions about civic centres, I think, need to actually be apart from this um, in terms of going forward. Uh, I commend the work that staff have done to get this far in an extremely short time frame, and I wouldn't like to see this being delayed at all um, in any way, and I'm sure the people in the region, especially Gosford, who've paid these levies for all this time, would like to see, as, as our Mayor said, um, like to see some turf tur turned. That would be lovely. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hogan. Um, Councillor McLaughlin, 
you're asking for an amendment. There's already an amendment there from Councillor Smith. There. Yep, I'm here. Uh, um, I was just wondering whether or not we could just uh, cut to the chase and just change the heading at the top where it says us update on Gosford Regional Library and we just put stroke new council chambers and because that, that's where we're heading with this it's going to be a, a mixed use building um, I understand we are, are going to be able to hold uh, council meetings in the new building and all that sort of thing so instead of just beating around the bush and calling it the regional library why don't we just come out and, on, be on, and just be honest and call it what it is um, Thanks, Councillor McLaughlin. I don't accept that change because it's a library. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Sorry, I think I muted you. Sorry. No, that's all right. I'm back. Um, so, Madam Mayor, I'm probably um, going to just clarify um, with Miss Vaughan, if I could, um, and it relates to Councillor McLaughlin's comment, but I agree with you. This is primarily a library, and that's what we've got funding for is primarily a library. Um, but I did just want to confirm that there will be the capacity or the facility to hold council meetings within this venue. If I could just get confirmation of that um, from Ms Vaughan. Through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Smith, you're correct. Um, there is a large um, function space that will um, cater for up to 300 um, persons. Um, that will be a multi-purpose space with retractable seating and will be available for a variety, variety of uses. So it definitely won't be a permanent um, council chambers, but um, the technical specifications um, will allow us to do a variety of activities um, inclusive of um, a council meeting um, if required, as well as civic functions equally through to author talks and um, other community activities and events. And my um, second question for Ms Vaughan, if I could, um, I did want to include an amendment that, um, it, you know, the councillors have a workshop with staff just to get an understanding of the design features uh, within three weeks. Would that delay the time frame in any way on the, um, on the plan? to have that workshop? Through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Smith um, provided there were no significant um, required changes um, or redesign work. Um, that would certainly still be within our, our um, timeframes um, and we're hoping to submit documentation over the next three to four weeks. So, Okay. Um, thank you, Ms Vaughan. Um, Madam Mayor, I will move that amendment if I have a seconder for that. Um, Councillor McGregor. All right, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so, Madam Mayor, I, th I think my amendment is largely consistent with your motion. Um, the only difference being that I did want to confirm um, that we would be able to hold meetings in that venue. And, and look, I think it's disturbing for many in the southern end of the coast or the former Gosford that um, although Gosford Council had council meetings in the chamber for over 20 years, this council, uh, for whatever reason, has decided they won't have council meetings in the chamber. And that is a loss of amenity. It's a loss of access. It's a loss of, um, you know, it's diminishing, uh, you know, the ability of people in the southern end of the Central Coast to participate in council meetings. Um, so, so I am pleased um, that there will be that ability to hold meetings at this venue. Um, and so I, you know, would like that confirmed in the motion so that there is no doubt that that is an expectation. Um, and I would like to have that workshop with staff just to look at what they're planning in terms of the design features. Um, the only other issue that I will be advocating for is that we have a high sustainability standard. Um, I don't expect that changes the building um, in terms of the structure, uh, in terms of the look, the feel, the functionality, but it may well change, you know, the lighting, the fabrics, the textures, the, um, you know, materials, um, and some of those matters. I can't expect that it would have significant changes on the design. Um, so I would hope that there would be support for the amendment or, Madam Mayor, if you were happy to accept it, I'd be happy for it to become the motion without an amendment. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McGregor, a seconder of the amendment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The amendment is reasonable. It is in line with the staff reports that we've received previously, and it's not going to delay the project at all. To vote against the amendment is simply to reject your own responsibilities as a leader for the Central Coast, especially given that when we were briefed on this, the concepts that we were shown was labelled concept E. We have not seen concept A through F. We've just apparently going to give a rubber stamp to E. 
I also unfortunately agree with Councillor McLaughlin with his statements on the update on the Gosford Regional Library. People need to get real about this. This is a $30 million new council admin building. It may contain components of a library, but the reality is it is an attempt and a, a way to move staff from the existing admin building because there is a plan which is coming to fruition now, which involves fattening the pig for market, which was the millions of dollars spent on upgrading the building before it is flogged off. And that is simply what is happening. And it's about downsizing to a new building once it's the old building is flogged off. Whether it has council chambers in the new uh, Gosford admin building is largely irrelevant because the bigger issues are not the ones that are being discussed here. The original staff recommendation that we were put forward to three years ago and had over 70% of the community wanting to have go ahead was a world-class genuine Gosford Regional Library. That then got elongated and changed into the cultural precinct plan, which was too big and unmanageable after funding was withdrawn from federal government. And then now we're accepting something which is not the original intent. And it, the ratepayers of Gosford did not pay th their uh, special rate levy for 30 years for a $30 million new council admin building. People need to get real about what this is and they need to look at it and will be judged accordingly at the election because this is not what they can, this is not a building which is going to meet community expectation. It is not fit for purpose and it is not a prudent way to spend public money at this time with the way that we are going with this. I cannot honestly believe that councillors do not want to even see the other concepts that have already been provided by staff and that councillors do not want to provide direction that was asked for in the report to the previous meeting. I've said many times that this project has been stuffed up by the so-called board of this council over the last three years. And unfortunately, we are now heading into an even more precarious and an even more potentially dangerous position in moving along with these things. There is an ulterior motive to these things and the aspects of making this facility economically viable and actually something that was delivering for community expectations seriously comes into question when you look at the reductions in its purpose and you look at how that that function centre is going to seek to compete with the Gosford RSL development as well as other private sector developments which we're aware of which are slated for the CBD. The building should be done properly and it should be a world-class regional library, not a new council staff admin building by stealth with a couple of floors with books in them. Thanks, Councillor McGregor. Councillor Mertens. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, uh, I was gonna speak on your motion, but this is now the amendment, so I'll speak against this amendment. Um, look, I think that was a, a very interesting uh, take from Councillor McGregor. Um, he and I have seen the same motions that have come through this place over the last three years. Um, I think at every step along the way, um, he's right. Um, individual interests have come into play and they have tried to stall this project again and again, uh, at first by trying to make it too small uh, and then by making it too big. Uh, and when it became too big, it became unmanageable. Uh, and then we're back to this project now, which I think um, does actually in fact deliver for the community expectations because the community expectations are for a regional library. Um, this is very much what this project delivers. Uh, it is a project that we uh, only two weeks ago uh, as a council agreed to move forward with. Um, and now we're looking to defer again. And I worry about the intentions behind uh, some of these reviews that councillors wanna have into the design. Um, uh, Ms. Vaughan has said, that this will cause delays if there are uh, major changes. And I think at this point, we've looked at the designs. We were briefed only a week ago on the current designs. Um, councillors have had a week uh, to speak to Ms. Bourne to get more information about certain aspects. If they haven't, then that's to their own fault. Um, but I am concerned about what another uh, design workshop would be uh, when councillors want to um, have another opportunity to delay this project. Um, we've got it on the table now. Uh, I think councillors need to acknowledge that the modern reality of, of libraries uh, is that books are not necessarily the only reason that we have a library anymore. Uh, they are about having uh, a mixed use space. They are about making sure that people have a place to study on their own computers with their own materials. Uh, it is gonna be a place where we have a, a devolution of, of staff into different buildings around uh, the council LGA. Uh, we have a very big area and to have all of our staff 
uh, seconded into two admin blocks in Wyong and Gosford is just not sustainable. Uh, it is better to have staff uh, in a variety of buildings. So yes, there will be staff uh, accessibility. And one of the big things, which although is quite um, questionable to me, the idea that we might have a space for what could be a town hall. Um, the community regularly brings up the, the idea of a town hall um, in, in our area. Um, and having an auditorium and a, and a mixed use space that can have retractable seating, which can make that possible uh, in this building, which is not a private facility, which is not in an RSL club, which is not in a leagues club, um, is I think an important aspect that we should have, and that should be part of a regional library. Libraries are not just books these days. Uh, and I think this project finally delivers and we are getting so close guys, let's do it now. Um, because any more, any more delays, any more changes, any more, oh, I just want to have one more look at the designs um, is just going to mean the death of this project. And we are so close and I would encourage everyone to vote for, uh, vote down this amendment and vote in favor of the original motion here tonight. Thank you, Councillor Mertens. Councillor Holstein. Some very interesting debate. It seems for me like this is deja vu. I can go back 20 years. I remember when the Broadwater Hotel was purchased uh, by a certain uh, Mayor Brooks who thought that that would be the best location. And then we got into political argy-bargy about people having to walk up a hill to get into a library. And, oh, it, it just seems to go on. So I, I do concur with some of the councillors to say let's move forward. I, however, will be supporting uh, the amendment because uh, this is the first time I've got I had a chance to debate or to actually look into the plans. I don't see any major changes at all. I don't see any deferral. And uh, I thank um, Ms Vaughan because she did answer my call. She did answer my questions. I'll reiterate one of those that haven't been answered as yet and can't be until what ultimately will be the overall plan in Kibble Park because it has a major impact uh, upon this library, library, civic centre, whatever you want to want to call it, um, I am interested in Councillor uh, McGregor's take on it, um, and it seems to have been contentious now, as it was many years ago, when um, we sought from the ratepayer a contribution towards getting an upgrade to our library. Um, the amendment, as I said, I'm not about trying to defer thing or make major changes, but it will be good to actually understand what's the difference between plan E, plan A, B, C, D, because I didn't get to see those. And I take a great interest on in what ultimately would, as I hope, the mayor gets to turn the sod in February and we move forward um, because it is long, long overdue. But I'll support the amendment because... In every major project I've seen go in this city before, there has been an advisory committee of the councillors, or don't call it an advisory committee, just a, a building committee or a committee that came together. There seems to be less and less of this where the officers take charge and move forward with what they want, and we don't seem to as councillors. When things were built from the aquatic centre to the library, uh, to the, um, sorry, the surf club upgrades, the Caroline Bay, even to the stadium, we had an involvement of the councillors at an early stage, and I don't think we've had that in this project because the project has changed constantly and we seem to get uh, concerns that there is a direction heading by the councillors or by the staff in, in one way or another. Councillors, this doesn't need to be deferred. This does need to at least be aware of what's going to be there and what's going to be placed and to put that on the table. I'll be supporting the amendment. I thank the staff for their input so far. Uh, I understand COVID has changed drastically everything. What may well happen to the Gosford Council Chambers is a consideration further down the line. I do think this meets the requirement of the library. All I'm asking is that opportunity to have a closer look at that so I better understand what has been the conversations of staff and councillors previous on what the facility will deliver. Thank you, Councillor Holstein. Councillor Best, you have a question. Thank you. Um, I have a question, but I would like to make comment when the time's right to Madam Mayor. Um, through you to Mr. Murphy, if I could, please, Mr. Murphy. Um, uh, the word deja vu was used. In oh, look, before I ask Mr. Murphy, could I please ask you, um, Madam Mayor Lisa, you, you denied Mr. Councillor McLaughlin the opportunity to change the title on the, the motion by staff, which you moved. 
However, in your opening comment I wrote down, you said library pseudo community facility, unquote. And you all then also Councillor Smith has now written it into her amender. And Councillor McGregor has made it quite clear his view on that it's it is more than a library. And I raised it at the last meeting or two, and so did Councillor McGlog. So could we it's change the It's always been. Well, it's always but you been. You ruled him more out than... of order. You ruled well, him out I of order. Well, I said that what I wouldn't. It? I, it's a, it is a library, but three hundred seat now library, are, an auditorium. Well, no, not it's not just an auditorium, Councillor. No, it's yes. not. But it's not um, just a library libraries either. Libraries these days have are not just libraries, so they are pseudo community facilities. I said so, it's not a community facility. It's it is the library, and that's what the funding is for. Oh, well, well, we'll we'll change it ourselves on the floor if we wish. So through you uh, to Mr. Murphy, Mr. Murphy, it's it's deja vu here again for myself. We we started the original um, RPAC fiasco at sixty million, and then it went to hundred million. Then it went to 120 and I was roundly condemned and lampooned for asking for Price Waterhouse Cooper's independent analysis on it. Um, and then it got to 150 and I was literally killed. Um, and then we got to 171 million without any contingencies and we gave up and walked away and left a few million bucks on the table. So here I hear tonight, Mr. Murphy, that councillors don't even know what options A to F look like. The staff have gone and spent $1.3 million in, in designs and architects, and there's a, a kind of encouraging line in the report going, councillors, if you pull back now, you'll lose $1.3 million. Don't do it. Same story as last time. So, Mr Murphy, on the, on the report, it says, and I think I can say it because it doesn't say confidential, it's got it's $27 million bucks, right? But plus contingencies, so what's the real cost of this going to be? I mean, look where we are just in this debate. What's the real cost going to be, do you think? Through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Best, in terms of the uh, overall project, I think the staff have been consistent by saying it's in round figures about $30 million. The figures that uh, Ms Vaughan has in the report relate to the uh, construction and fit out of that. Uh, from the figures that I've seen, I think that the contingency amount is uh, realistic based on the stage of the contract uh, of the project of where it is at the moment. Well, Mr. Murphy, can't you see our apprehension as board members here seeking advice from our general manager when the same staff provided us an initial view of let's start at $100 million for the RPAC. We got to $171 million, And then when I raised a 20% contingency gets us a $205 million development. We started really at 60 million with the same staff projection. So what comfort have we really got here being that I've just found out that the councillors don't know what A to F looks like, what, what plan A, B, C, D, E, F looks like. And we're now recommending E. <laughs> Deja vu? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Best, I think, uh, the comments that Councillor Merton's made in relation to the scope change or scope creep with the uh, Regional Performing Arts Centre are quite valid. And I think that's why when Council considered this matter a few weeks ago relating to whether there should be a commercial element to, to the library and additional floors, um, I think the sentiment of the, of the councillors then was, no, let's build a library and build a very good regional library for the, for the Central Coast. And so that is certainly something that the staff are focused on to make sure that we can deliver on the project that council wants. So Mr. Murphy, and just correct me if I'm wrong, our Q3 for last financial year was $41 million loss. You came into your chair and this council came into being at an $80 million profit. Is that correct? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best, the figure in relation to the Q3 uh, is correct. It was about $41.3 million, I think. Um, I started in this council on the 2nd of July, 2018. Yes. Um, the Q3 um, has got adjustments to come, so we could easily get to $50 million, couldn't we? Mine, uh, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best, uh, we could quite easily get significantly more than that. Thank you, Mr. Murphy, for your honesty. Now, we've now also budgeted in this year, this financial year, um, for a $13 million loss. 
this year, this budget for this this art building, this library, this year a $13 million loss. And last year we 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 budgeted for an $18 million loss and ended with a 50 million, what you just said, possibly significantly more loss. So we went from an $18 million budgeted loss to an excess of 50 million by the sounds of it. We've got a $30 million loss budgeted, black and white now. So that's going to take us to, if the figures from last year, anything like this, going to go this year, plus COVID, we're, we're looking at the barrel 30, 40, 50 million again this year. And we're spending an extra $12 million out of asset sales that we could put against losses. Do you think that's good management as, 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 as the director, as the, as, the, as the general manager of the organisation? Now, you've got to give the board some direction here, Gary. I give my board direction and they always like it, but you've got to tell the truth. So um, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best, is your question whether the council should proceed with this project or not? No, is it prudent for... No, no, no. On page, I'll get this damn page back up because it's now gone to sleep. Just pardon me. One, two, three. On page three of the attachment, because we've got a million attachments and we're trying to follow this like moving chairs, um, we've got a, a, a page three of the attachment shows the library special resolution at 18.1 million. We've got the library fed grant at 7, 7 million and we've got the sale um, of Donaldson at 12.6 million. There's $27 million there. We're going to spend around 35 million if you put a contingency in. So we're and I know there's some other numbers which I won't go into, but we're still going to be short of five million on that number alone. Just that's what's going to happen. As night follows day, it's going to be five million more with contingencies. So wouldn't you say that we should cut the cloth? It's covert. People can't get jobs. This is their rates. We put their rates up by $4.4 million a few months ago. Why wouldn't we cut the cloth to the eight million for the variation, the special variation, and the seven million for the government grant? Build a building, a library, whatever, for 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 you know twenty million. We've got the money sitting there to add it, our twelve million to it. We could put that off against the losses this year. Isn't that a better formula in in, in, a, in, a, in a a knuckle down, buckle down COVID environment? Through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best, I think the, the challenge will be in relation to the federal funding and the requirements to deliver a 4,000 square metre library. I mean, Ms Vaughan can, uh, can comment on that. I think if we cut our cloth, there would be a real risk that we may lose that, that federal funding. Well, isn't everything, like, we sat down and went through cutting our budget, our, our operational plan, by more than $100 million dollars. And we called it deferring them. We all know some of those projects will never see the light of day, but we weren't game enough to say we've cancelled them. We just deferred them 100 plus million bucks. So that's unprecedented for us to do that. Well, why would the Fed not see its way clear under COVID to move mountains to let us get on with this in the, in the budget we've actually got and put the 12 million to the loss we have actually forecast to have? Through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best, um, I, I obviously can't speak on behalf of the, uh, the Commonwealth, but no, I do no. know that they have put uh, us under immense pressure to deliver this project. Otherwise, we may lose that, that funding um, and then that will put the, the project at jeopardy. They said, the la they said that at the last time we, when we cancelled the $171 million project, didn't they? Through you, Madam Mayor, uh, Yes, this funding has always been always threatened. been at risk. Yeah, threatened. Um, yeah. So I think there's only so many times that we could say, uh, please, sir, madam, can we have another 12-month extension? Please, sir, it's COVID. Madam Mayor, may I make comment or I'll line up to make comment if I may, please? Thank you, Mr Murphy. I've got two people that have questions. So you Thank can, you. do you want to wait? Yes, that, thank you. Thank you okay. for your indulgence. Thank you. All right. Um, Councillor Marquette. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, mine, mine's not a question. It's more It's more of a, a brief comment in regards to uh, the amendment we've got here. Um, the point that talks about um, Councillor, Councillor Smith mentioned, one of the main reasons from her point of view to get this back down around a round table is to talk about having the high sustainability standards. I, I sort of feel like we're back to where we were before it turned into a 171 million juggernaut. 
the thing what ha- well, that's called in building, it's called a green star rating. A green star rating for every component within that building will add 15 to 20%. I can guarantee you with, that, with our products and a green star rated building, it adds 20%. So when you're adding, you know, 10, 15, 20% to 30 million, you're adding a hell of a lot of money. So this is, if we've, if I think Director Vaughan mentioned, this has to be in in four weeks. If we're talking about sitting down in three weeks and um, raising this up to a green star rating, we're, we're talking about spending another four four, five, six million dollars. So I just wanted to make that comment from someone that works in the industry. It's not that easy to say. The builders already work to BCAs, already work to Australian standards, already work to high sustainability standards. If we're going to add a green star rating to this, we're going to take another massive chunk of ratepayers' money. Actually, we're going to borrow more money. Sorry, so Councillor are you are you making a comment? Are you speaking Correct. for or against? Which one are you speaking for or against? Oh, uh, you can say I'm, spe- I'm speaking against that particular part of the amendment, Madam Mayor. Okay, speaking against it. Thank you. Just yeah, being thank you. clear. Appreciate that. And that's fine. Thank you. Okay, thank yeah. you. Councillor Pillen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, actually, Councillor Best has probably, he's covered that off. I really just wanted to get some reassurance and for the public to hear the actual breakdown of the costings given our budget, current budget deficits. Um understand we have brought the price down a lot and I wasn't supportive of the exorbitant cost. Councillor Best has made some very valid points tonight and it is important that we do build within our means. Uh, and I do think it's worthwhile that we seek advice from the Commonwealth, either whether they would be supportive of an extension or whether they would um, prefer to see us build within our means of the funding that we actually have from the special levy and their grant funding. So thank right. you. Thank you, Councillor Pillan. Uh, Director Vaughan, can I just seek some clarification or, um, in relation to some of the comments that have been made? And um, I guess the first comment is this A to E. Can you please explain what the comments are A to E, what the variations are? Thank you. Three, Madam Mayor. Um, the it's different um, design elements. So there's been a project working group that has been established that's a cross-organisational um, group that consists of representatives of all departments, um, key library staff as well. So there has been some iterations, um, mainly about um, achieving best use of floor space. Um, so for example, um, you know, at one iteration, the child, the children's um, story time component was on the second level, um, but after some reworking and consideration, the alignment was that it was better placed on the ground level. So all of the inclusions are exactly the same. It's just different um, designs that have uh, that show the different elements um, on the different levels that are achieving the best use of space from a functionality and a design perspective. And um, we recently undertook the um, operational budget and we have budgeted for the additional above the um, funded amounts. That's correct. Through you, Madam Mayor, um, there are three funding sources for this particular project. So there is $8.1 million that was collected under the former Gosford Council as a special rate variation. We have a signed funding agreement with the federal government for $7 million. And there was a formal resolution with the former Gosford Council in relation to the sale proceeds for the Kibbleplex building of a total of $12.6 million, totaling $27,700,000. And... My final question is, um, I know in previous we've gone back and asked or, or have we approached uh, any of the funding um, bodies uh, for an extension? I'm very well aware that when I've made representation, it's basically being told to me, no way deliver the library. So have, has staff made any mutings about getting an extension? Through you, Madam Mayor, um, this, is, this project has had many... Um, interactions with the funding body over multiple years. The original funding commitment was um, guaranteed in 2015 and through the um, development of the cultural precinct designs and in the individual library designs, there was a number of um, iterations. Um, in accordance with the um, reports provided earlier this year, we had currently have a signed funding agreement with key milestones to achieve, hence why um, my reference earlier was that um, from a timetabling perspective, um, we 
you know, were on our plan was to submit um, the documentation within the next four weeks. Um, we've currently achieved already our first milestone requirement. Thank you, Councillor. Um, sorry, giving you a Councillor Vaughan. Thank you, Director Vaughan. And um, Councillor Mertens, you have a question? Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, I feel like that would be a, de a demotion for Ms Vaughan. Um, just a question, just following up from your question and also carrying on from Councillor Pillen's comment that we should be living within our means. Um, I, my understanding is that all that money is in the bank. Is that right? That's that's all stuff we, oh, apart from, you know, the, the agreements we have where which are signed, but the $12 million is within our means because that's within our bank accounts now and being held for that purpose, isn't it? Through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Mertens, that the sales of the Kiwiplex has been allocated and identified for the library project, as has the special rate variation funds. And unlike the previous iterations of this project, this is all within, uh, I guess, within our means in as much as there's no borrowing aspect for this? Through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Mertens, the uh, um, cost estimates have, are attached to this and we believe that it's definitely within the um, funding available. And in terms of, look, I don't have a degree in economics and nor do you, I assume, um, but one would imagine that spending this sort of money in our community uh, up to $30 million over the course of um, the two or three years of construction, that's probably going to generate some uh, number of jobs in our community. Would, would you assume that would be the case? Through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Mertens, absolutely. Um, I mean, there's many stages of the development of this um, project and absolutely, um, you know, certainly our procurement processes um, encourage the, um, you know, use of um, local providers as well. So um, one would hope that that's absolutely what it realises. Would you, would you say that the, the part that generates the least jobs is if we keep talking about it and actually don't deliver anything? Through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Mertens, that's certainly one way to look at it. Thank you, Ms. Wong. Thank you, councillors. Um, Councillor Bess, you're speaking. I'll speak against. Thank you. Look, councillors. Both? Yeah, well, I have to, for God's sake. I mean, okay. you know, this is going to be one of those legacy projects the other, the new council is going to look back on and go, my God, you know, um, Councillor Merton says, oh, we've got to achieve a few things. Look, you guys are not going to, not even going to go near turning a sod of dirt. It's that simple. All you're going to do is saddle the new council with a whole lot of documentation that's going to tie them up to a deal they can't get out of after COVID, after the budget we leave behind. And we're looking like we're going to leave well in excess of a $100 million loss here against the administrator when he started, well past that, about like 140, I'm figuring. Gary just outlined that we are looking at in excess of 50 million for last year's loss, in excess. You know, you're looking this year, who knows, you've already budgeted for a loss. You've got fourth CFO, the fourth CFO councillors we've gone through in this term of council. You've got $232 million of borrowed money sitting at 6.25%, running up debt over 10 years of $150 million. And you've got soap and prawns and fences on your damn agenda. I cannot believe you are doing this to our community. It is a disgrace and Councillor Hogan, you cannot for one moment as a budget reward councillor tell me that this is a regional equal opportunity facility for the people of Budgiewoy. This is a disgrace for the people of Budgiewoy. And this is going to overrun in the tune of between 35 and $40 million. That's the legacy you're going to leave. You put up the rates by 4.4 million, you put up your wages and you're building a, 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 a pseudo, a pseudo council building after spending $100 million on your own, sorry, $100,000 on your own security for the Gosford Chamber, which you couldn't use after that, but you spent 100 grand on your own insecurity. You weren't so rude to people and nasty to them and backbiting when they're in the chamber they might not have wanted to piano wire some of you so look at the end of the day you bring on bring you so you know you reap what you sow and you've sown some shocking outcomes here i mean the fourth cfo do you understand it did, did you people read the local government's report that's just come out on this council why don't you whack that on the agenda and have a little read it's really good sunday reading that report and there'll be more put out on that the absolute dysfunctionality the governance the cost, you know, and this is on our watch. This is on our watch, councillors. You can't blame Gosford and Wyong for this. You've been in the job for a thousand days. You can't keep leaning back and blaming the past. It's now us. A $50 million loss last year 
and a, and a supposed $13 million this, a loss this year. You got seven libraries down there in the Gosford LGA and you had the trite response to tell me, oh, we're not planning to close any of them. We're not planning to close any of them. Of course, you're going to going to garrot them. You have to close them, but you're not telling them that. Poor people are sitting there with their little community organisations and this monster comes along and shuts them down. But we're not talking about that, councillors. I think this is deceptive. This is mean and this is tricky and we can't afford it. Thanks, Councillor Best. Councillor Hogan, you got a question? Better be a question. Thanks, Councillor Best. Councillor Hogan. I've actually got two questions, actually. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Best, my question is, why do you feel at every single meeting for three years that you have to have a go at me? Besides the fact that I might be a threat to you, what other reason have you got? Because I asked you to stop because I'm a little bit tired of it. You don't have to answer that. You can just think about it. My next question is, no, you don't get right a reply anymore. My next question through you, Madam Mayor, is to um, Director Vaughan from Connected Communities. My understanding with the $27.5 million you just spoke about, that all that money is collected and unlike what was just said, none of that money is coming from our ward or our ratepayers for that matter. Is that correct? Through Madam Mayor, Councillor Hogan, um, that is correct. So the special rate levy was collected over a number of years under the former Gosford Council and the Kibble Parks building was sold in 2015. So unlike what other councillors said, there's nothing coming from Budgie Roy Ward into that library, into the library. Through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Hogan, um, simplistically, that answer is probably yes. I mean, the reality is, as I said, there's rate variations that were collected under the former Gosford Council um, and uh, sale proceeds from the Kibbleplex building. Well, thank you. Thank and you, government Council. funding, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there are no other, other chats, so therefore I will put the amendment as moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor McGregor. All those in favour of the amendment, please raise your hand. Councillor Holstein, Councillor Vincent, Councillor McGregor, sorry, Councillor Smith, all those against. Councillor Matthews, Councillor Best, Councillor Ho, sorry, Councillor Greenaway, we, are you for the amendment or against? Okay, sorry, we'll just put your hands down again. For the amendment, can, please raise your hands. Councillor Greenaway, Councillor Holstein, Councillor McGregor, Councillor Smith, and I believe Councillor Vincent was for the amendment. Thank you. Against the amendment, Councillor Matthews, Councillor Best, Councillor Hogan, Councillor Marquette, Councillor Gale, Councillor Mertens, Councillor Pillen and Councillor Burke, Councillor Sundstrom, Councillor McLaughlin, are you abstaining, abstention? It, the, the amendment's lost anyway. Um, therefore, the amendment becomes the motion. Oh, sorry, the motion is as moved by myself and second by Councillor Hogan. I just want to say one thing as right of reply is I'm disappointed at the comments that have been made by some of the councillors who talked about ripping up checks and handing checks back to the government. And this is this sounds like that's what you want, that's what you're trying to do to this one. It's disappointing. This community has been promised a library for a long time. And this council is is going to deliver that library. The money is in the budget. Majority of the money or 90% of the money is funded from um, sale of a building in Gosford, a rate levy, a special rate levy from Gosford and grants from the, uh, the Fed. So for us to not to stop this project and not go ahead means exactly what you didn't want Winnie Bay to do and that's ripping up a cheque and sending it back. So I'm flabbergasted to think that that's what some councillors here are suggesting. This library, the community has been promised and this library needs to go ahead. So therefore, I will put the motion as moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Hogan. Um, those in favour, please raise your hand. 
Councillor Matthews, Councillor Hogan, Councillor Marquette, Councillor Gale, Councillor Smith, Councillor McLaughlin, Councillor Mertens, Councillor Greenway, Councillor Pillen, Councillor Holstein, Councillor Sundstrom, all those against. Councillor Burke, I've lost you, but Councillor McGregor and Councillor Best and Councillor Vincent and Councillor Burke is against. Therefore, I declare the motion carried. Thank you, Councillor. No, Councillor Burke, are you trying to talk to me? Sorry. I am. Just... I, I dropped out, but I was for the motion. Okay, sorry, Councillor Burke. Was... That's, yep, you're for the motion. So um, meeting staff, Councillor Burke was for the motion, if you can amend that. The motion is still um, carried. Thank you, Councillor Burke. Uh, Councillors, we're going to take a, a five-minute adjournment um, before we move on to item 3.9. So, Councillors, um, five minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, to those on webcast, we're having a five-minute um, adjournment. Thank you. Unfortunately, Madam Mayor, I keep dropping in and dropping out. Yeah, I thought so, Councillor Burke. Um, I think some of us are... Yeah, so I'll, I'll check. Thank you.
councillors, community members, um, we'll commence with um, item 3.9, which is the uh, response to the notice of motion, SOAP in public toilets. I believe Councillor Greenaway. Thank you. I was waiting for the unmuting. Um, I do have a, oh, there it is. You have an amendment? Yes. Right, do I, and um, Councillor Vincent will second your amendment. So um, feel free to. So I'll just um, quickly talk um, my way through it and ask uh, Councillor, not Councillor, Director Julie Vaughan, just a couple of questions um, when everyone's had a chance to read it. Where are we up to? So obviously um, the first paragraph is unchanged. Um, the second is just endorsing the installation of the soap and signage. And then the third one is instead of having the vandal guards at every single site, as if every single site is at risk of vandalism, uh, I'm proposing that we put the vandal guards at only 20 sites at this stage. Um, and those are the sites that have been risk at, identified at um, high risk of vandalism by multiple service requests to those sites. Um, yes, yeah, so then the next one just says that we allocate, formally allocate the money. Um, the fifth one, I think uh, Councillor Sundstrom may have mentioned this during the briefing this afternoon, um, but there could be external sources of funding available. So I have just included that rather than wait for an amendment from the floor. Um, but I've specifically said that council proceed with the installation. So we're not waiting on any grant money. If that's to come, that's just a bonus, but we are to move forward with this. Um, the next one is a report back from the CEO after three months after the installation has been affected. And the last one I think just came about from um, when Professor Short was speaking and she acknowledged some of the messaging that's come out of both your office, Madam Mayor, and your, um, your what's your article in the newspaper, your, your mayor's column, um, so that. So if everyone's happy with that, I'm happy to talk to it. Unless Go anyone want to amend it? Or Councillor Vincent's happy with it? Uh, Councillor Vincent. Um, actually, no, sorry, I was going to ask the three questions of, of um, Director Vaughan, but anyway, is Councillor Vincent happy? Um, like we've discussed uh, earlier, Councillor Greenaway, I'm, I'm happy with the amendment as a whole. I would prefer if we, where you're saying uh, in all council managed facilities, First off, I'd like clarification from Councillor uh, Director Vaughan, uh, if um, if it's possible for them to go in all facilities, if there's some reason why every facility couldn't have it because of some design or something that we we're not aware of, then I I wouldn't like uh, uh, us to be backed into a corner. But to to do them in, in as many as possible would be the uh, as many as as possible. But maybe we should get clarification from Director Vaughan on that. You know? Thank you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Vincent. Um, I'm not aware that there's any sites that are not able to have the installation, but I mean, if, um, you know, it may be wiser to have, you know, some wording that, you know, where, you know, where it's possible, but um, we believe, you know, because currently there is no dispensers, so it's actually about a new installation and these ones don't require anything, um, any major um you know, certain fittings, etc. So um, I'm not aware that there should be any concerns. Well, maybe up at the end of point two, we could just say, um, unless this proves impossible where, or, or yeah, impractical. Yeah, where possible. Maybe just where possible, Councillor Greenaway. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Happy, Councillor Vincent? Um, 
thanks for we're happy Brenna. and the rationale behind the three months so i thought six months would be more appropriate but what, what are you what's your thinking there with it um well director vaughan may be able to help with this but i'm assuming we've got to have a little bit of a lead time in order to order some of the dispensers and signs and things and then install them and then they'll be in use so i just thought um getting some feedback relatively quickly to see if we need to do anything further, like change the proportion of guards, um, vandal guards, things like that. Uh, but if we can change it to six months from today, if you'd rather, rather than three months from after installation. I'm, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not stuck on it. I, I just thought a six monthly review, but count, uh, count, uh, direct, you're going to be council of all now. <laughs> Director <laughs> Vaughan had, had something to say, had something to comment there. Thank you. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, um, Councillor Vincent, um, I mean, I, the current report um, notes that where we are um, hoping to um, install Vandal Guard um, dispensers that will take up to 10 weeks so um, to be able to procure the actual product so um, I suppose that's why Councillor Greenaway has actually written from the time of installation because the reality is that could still be five months time from when we actually from tonight. Okay so if it's a three months review that, that that works out okay. No happy with that thank you Councillor Greenaway. I might leave it to other councillors if there's uh, any uh, major concerns there are, apart from opposing the the motion. Is there any um, tweaks that other councillors or improvements that other councillors would have? No, Councillor uh, Greenaway. Oh. Okay, so I just have three quick questions for Council for <laughs> Director Vaughan. Um, firstly, we've got the we're installing the soap dispenser guards at up to twenty sites. Um, so I'm assuming that by saying we already endorse the installation of them at all council managed sites, you'll start on the ones that don't need the vandal guards then by the time the vandal guard ones arrive then you'll put it in those ones that require the vandal guard so we can start on this sooner than waiting for all the vandal guards to arrive is that agree madam mayor councillor greenaway that is correct so the um it's a much quicker turnaround to just receive the dispensers um the vandal guard was um what would require some delay. I still think um, the availability of product was about four weeks. I mean, and there's installation, obviously, you know, geographically it's a large space, but yes, we would expect within four to six weeks. Okay, then we considered maybe a dozen of them in the end, we decided on 20 sites. I know that's probably not a definite number, but are you reasonably comfortable with that or did you want it revised upwards or downwards or? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Greenaway, really that is a matter for council laws as to what level of numbers. I mean, for, uh, from a staff perspective, um, you know, we were recommending that um, we believe that the Vandal Guards was a good measure. Um, I mean, 20 um, would allow us to focus on some, you know, high vandalism areas. But, um, I mean, the current proposal and the current staff recommendation was saying that that would be done in all high use sites. So, um, yeah. Okay. So my last question is just to be absolutely sure, even though we've put in here that we want to um, investigate the possibility of sourcing um, external funding, you know, we do want you to start on this. We don't want to be held back while you make any applications for external funding. We want to hit start on this. Assuming it gets through tonight. So you, that's definitely clear from um, paragraph five. Through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Greenaway, yeah, I'm satisfied that um, the current wording of recommendation five gives us the um, required approval to proceed with um, the installation. Okay, that's great. Okay, well, if I could just speak briefly to the motion, Madam Mayor. Um, but firstly, I just wanted to start with some thank yous. So thank you to Professor Short for attending the public forum tonight and sharing her knowledge and experience with us. Uh, thank you to the Central Coast Local Health District for their email in support of installing soap in our public toilets. Thank you to Tony Adams, a former Chief Health Officer for New South Wales and former Chief Health Officer for Australia for his email of support. This type of support is really fantastic as it shows that this motion has credibility. It gives it the status that it deserves and it puts paid to the embarrassing claims that it is trivial or somehow beneath the consideration of this council. 
Uh, I offer my particular thanks to all the community members who have emailed their support for this motion and to them also for recognising the importance of efforts to address COVID and to protect our community, our visitors and particularly our vulnerable. Even without COVID, soap is important for maintaining basic personal hygiene. I'm privileged to have brought this motion to the Chamber on behalf of residents and I commend it to the Chamber. Thank you, Councillor Greenaway. Um, Councillor Vincent has seconded to the motion. One, two. Yep, you're nope. on. I'm on, thank you. Yep. Um, yeah, look, thanks, Councillor Greenaway. I think this is a ripper of a motion and uh, this is certainly one where local government can play its role in its facilities. And uh, if we look at the New South Wales Government Health website at the moment, it's saying under one of its posters there, trying to uh, uh, give resident citizens uh, ways to manage the, the coronavirus, it's under the keep yourself and your loved ones safe poster. And the key message there, the first message is to clean your hands thoroughly with soap and water or alcohol-based products. And of course, the second, you know, social distancing, and then the third, the managing of respiratory particulates, coughing into your elbow um, or wearing a mask if you're going to confine areas or spaces or buildings. But in particular, when it comes to soap, and some councillors had asked about this, the surfactant in the soap breaks down the fatty bilayer, the outer shell of the membrane of the virus. So washing your hands with soap breaks that down and it destroys the virus. You can't just wash your hands under, under normal water. Um, you can, as Councillor Bess says, uh, take a plastic bag with soap in it or uh, take some hand pump and utilise that. But just not everybody's going to have that on them. Not everybody who walks the dog, not everybody who drives from Sydney um, or Newcastle or out of the area to, to visit the Central Coast and use our amenities is, is going to have that. Some will, some won't. So if we provide it, one, we're keeping people safe who, or helping to keep people safer that come to the Central Coast. Two, we're helping provide um, a safety measure at the local government level uh, from a council perspective for the residents of the coast. Now, there is a cost to this, but I don't see it as absorbent. absorbent. So um, I, th I think that's the right word, maybe not. But um, well, Councillor McGregor is very good on the thesaurus, so I'd be happy to be corrected um, as Councillor McGregor can. The, but it was uh, looking at about 120,000 to install these dispensers and provide this facility. Now, if we had half a dozen residents on respirators or in hospital in intensive care, that money goes out the window very quickly. And I believe that this is part of us playing our role as insurance. Last week, there were 63, 63 people in New South Wales um, diagnosed with COVID. And this, year, this week, sorry, we're up to 21. So, and we're still halfway through the week. So we're not out of this pandemic yet. We're in the second wave and I suspect there'll be a third wave and a fourth wave. But here, I'd really recommend this uh, amendment that Councillor Greenaway has put up. This is our local government playing its role and trying to stem the um, coronavirus and to keep our community safe. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. I have a question from Councillor Holstein. Councillor Holstein. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's not a question. I have no difficulty with the motion whatsoever. It probably is just the direction back to you. You'll recall that uh, in the early days of COVID, uh, we had what was totally and utterly an unprecedented um, numbers of vandalism attacks on what we thought were our vandal proof uh, toilet dispensers and uh, for the sake of toilet roll being pinched from public facilities. That was a great cost to council. Um, and, and I'm not seeking to change the motion other than to ask you, Madam Mayor, we need to put a call out to our community and you through your weekly chats on the radio or on your column, need to remind people that they've got to be diligent for those idiots or individuals that seek to do the wrong things. There is a cost. It is not uh, an excessive cost to council really in the overall scheme of things, but still every one of us as ratepayers pay for that damage that's done. So only by, you know, people being observant, reporting that, and, you know, dobbing these idiots that think that they can damage public facilities because what I can see here 
and even in the Gold Coast, 1.2 a week. It's going to be fairly excessive if we go 12 months down and we we lose on average, you know, uh, 1.2 a week. That's very much cost. So my comment is just back to you about reminding people of their civic duties. We're going to do this. We expect everybody to do the right thing. And if you see somebody doing the wrong thing, gob them in. If you see something that's damaged, let us know at council so that it can be rectified. That's all I was asking of you, Madam Mayor. No, thanks, um, Councillor Hosting. We'll definitely get it into our next um, Mayor's column. I have a question from, I think, Councillor Marquette. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, to, to Director Vaughan, just to um, just trying to get my head around some of the, the figures of the of obviously the new motion, which effectively is a tailing new motion um, that we've got here on the floor. So originally, um, with with what was the original, I'm going to say, recommendation from staff, there was a cost um, with the cost for the 74 sites, the installation, the 27,604 per year in soap and the 15,126 vandalism was going to cost 104,965 for the 74 sites. I will note that the seconder of this motion thought it was going to be about 100 grand for what he's putting up here, so he's very much incorrect. On what I'm asking you, um, Director Vaughan, do you know what the cost will be for this, for what we're about to vote for? Three, Madam Mayor, Councillor Marquette. Um, short answer is um, no. I know some detail, however. I do know that um, the removal of the um, Vandal Guard is um, $60 or $59 per unit. So that's what the reduction is on per dispenser. Um, but we've not had the time to work out those calculations. So my understanding is that the resolution that was um, committed to at the end of July was for an allocation of up to $100,000 um, within the operational plan. Um, so I would presume that um, this re resolution would limit um, the expenditure to that amount. Okay, because just um, if if per year, um, Director Vaughan, it was going to be $27,604 for soap for 74 units. If we're going now 154 units, um, that's up to 31478 um, if you add that to the, the increased vandalism, you're looking at $89,000 per year just to service them. So you, we literally, if that's that's what I'm saying, we're, in my opinion, we're, and I'll, I'll get into what I think about it in a minute, but if that's the case, there's no money left to actually install them, is there? Or purchase them? Through you, Madam Mayor, um, Councillor Marquette, on page 15, there is a breakdown of what the cop capital costs are. So there yeah, is some... Soap that's actually included in the first year. So there's um, there's both the capital cost for the actual dispensers, and then the ongoing cost beyond that, because that will obviously become a recurrent cost that has not currently or previously been included into budget. So um, you know you are right that, um, but these work these um, cost estimates are assuming that we would be um, doing it on a vandal guard. Um, inclusion so they need to um, be reduced per dispenser by $59 so oh, I realize that yeah the, and the vandalism will go up to 32,000 all by itself that that's fine um yeah I'll be a monkey's uncle if we fit this under 100,000 but that's for another day I suppose we're just voting on an open checkbook um, in regards to the actual idiosyncrasies of it so everything I read um, and it was a very good point Professor Short when I'm um, thanking the mayor for all she's been saying and um, at the start of the meetings and that, which is correct, it's, it's we have to get the message out. She noted there's some fantastic and helpful um, campaigns um, from the New South Wales and federal government. Well, I've looked at all these. So th as I read them, they all mention that you'd, you have to be washing your hands for 20 seconds. You have to be taking all your jewellery off. Don't touch the taps. If you are going to touch the taps, you have to get a piece of paper out of there and and do the tap there you have to dry your hands or put your hands in the fan now with these dispensers are we considering because again the move around the second have both said this is for the sake of covid to stop the spread of covid are we going to be putting in paper towel dispensers with these items sorry can, sorry councillor mark i have a point of order from councillor greenaway oh sorry i've got Sorry, Councillor Greenway, you need to, um, that was me, my apologies. Sorry, the code of meeting practice um, allows for us to correct um, people when they miss 
um, misstate what you've said. Um, and I actually said, even without COVID, soap is important for maintaining basic personal hygiene. So I did not, as he has just suggested, say this is just for COVID. I never said that. I said you said it was for COVID. So you're not yeah, missing. and I but just you said to you that it's not just for COVID. That's the second that's statement the after you've already mentioned COVID. So that's fine. If Councillor I can get back Mark to my Quitch. Sorry, um, <laughs> Councillor Mark Quitch, she's correct. She didn't say it wasn't just about COVID, and you've twice said it. So it is Thank a you, Madam Mayor. I acknowledge she said that. You'd no, I acknowledge she said that, Madam Mayor, okay. after she'd already mentioned COVID. So I acknowledge she said that. Yes, I definitely okay, say she said thank that. You. That's great. Um, just to get back here, yeah, sorry, Tom, um, um, through you, Madam Mayor, to Director Vaughan, um, will we be installing um, fans to dry hands or paper towel dispensers? Through you, Madam Mayor, um, Councillor Marquette, no, we won't be. No, we won't be. Okay, so I can't see what that's got to do with um, COVID then. Um, so and in regards to the tough stuff, Metland covers that we're putting in, um, it's, I'm looking at the website now. I've, I've looked at it today as well. So they're all touch. You've got to touch the big buttons. Is that is that correct, Director Vaughan? So they're not, um, they're not automatic soap dispensers? Through you, um, Madam Mayor, Councillor Marquette, that's correct. Okay, thank you very much. Can I just quickly talk against this, um, Madam Mayor? Yes, yeah, thank you very much. So what so what we've got here, um, we've got an open um, checkbook uh, motion, which is uh, originally we had, and, and let's be honest, there've, there's been plenty of time for this particular item to be to be hashed out, to be had. Um, there's been plenty of time for the author of this to say, okay, let's let's do what we want to do from in in regards. If we want to get some soap into these, and you could have went for the seventy four sites and got protection in there. Councillor so Marquette, I have another point of order. Councillor Greenaway, what's your time, point of please, order? stuff. Yep, they've got it. Time She'll stop. keep doing this, Madam Mayor. That's what she does. That's okay. Thanks, Councillor Marquette. Councillor Marquette, if you're going to persist in making incorrect statements, you give me a little option. Um, Thank you very much. Which point of oh, Thanks, I was just Madam going Mayor. to ask Councillor, Va uh, Councillor Vaughan. It's happened again. I'm sorry. sorry that's Director my fault. Vaughan. I started that. Um, we're talking about the $100,000 that we were... Um, allocate, that we allocated in the operational plan. So um, I did speak to you prior to putting this motion forward tonight and asked you specifically whether you thought this would be sufficient. And from my understanding of your response, the answer was yes. So you just clarify that. Is please. this a point of order or a question, so, Madam Mayor? Well, you're saying that I've got an open checkbook, Councillor Marquette. If you're going to maintain those Not sorts of comments, you might as well be half accurate. Not so I'm going to... Sorry, Councillor Marquette, I'm the adjudicator here, not Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Appreciate so it. So if you can just be quiet for two minutes. Um, look, whilst I appreciate it's not actually a point of order, however, she, Council Greenway is correct. This is not about an open checkbook. There is a budgeted figure. So therefore, I will um, ask you please to refrain from using open checkbook when you know that there is a figure attached to it. Thank you. Thank you for confirming that wasn't a point of order, Madam Mayor. Yeah, so I won't, what I'll say is that um, there's supposed to be $100,000 there, but um, yeah, I'm only a, a poor, simple, small business owner, but it works out to $88,924 from the staff report in operation, just in soap and, pe and people putting that soap and the vandalism facts. That's, that's if vandalism is only 1.2%. So, if this actually was about keeping people safe, like I'll say, sorry, God, I wouldn't say Councillor Greenaway, I'll say Councillor Vincent, I'm sure he'll admit he said that this is to stop the spread of COVID. If this really is for that, then why aren't we putting paper towel dispensers in there? Why aren't we putting a nice little shelf as well so everyone can take their jewellery off, like the New South Wales State Government says you sorry, need to? Sorry, Councillor Vincent. Time, please. Is this a point of order, Councillor Vincent? Well, it is. It is, Madam Mayor. And I, what's your point of order? I probably should have tried to indicate it better, but I... I just uh, did what came to mind. I thought Councillor Markowitz said this is about stopping COVID, which any rational person would I'd understand that it's not about stopping, it's about helping prevent it. So I don't know whether you're just trying to rewrite history or reinvent the vocabulary that people use here, but you've misquoted the intent of what I was definitely saying. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. So, Councillor Marquette, if you can keep on topic and... Well, I can't even get a sentence out, miss, Madam Mayor. Well, you do tend to misrepresent <laughs> what people are saying, so you're I'll changing the You can go back words. and look at the webcast tomorrow and you'll see he I said will. that word for word because I wrote I it down. 
Thank I've you, got it written right here. Thank, thanks, thanks, Madam Mayor. It won't be long that you get another one of those. Don't worry. So what we've got, and they just they just keep trying to do that, Madam Mayor, because what they'll do is they'll hope that I'll run out of time. But the fact of the matter is, I'll say it again, $88,924 in operational fees every year, including vandalism, to do diddly squat, to do absolutely diddly squat. It's not going to help in regards to the pandemic situation. It would be just as helpful to put a vending machine in there that's going to put talcum powder and, and, and deodorant, because this is not going to do anything anything for COVID, but what we're going to do is we're going to create an issue, again, an issue for the next council, because by God, we're going to put 100 and 154 um, toilet blocks are going to have all these um, soap dispensers in them. Only 20 now are going to have co vandalism covers. God knows how many are going to get vandalised every year. God knows what the cost is going to be. The report here, staff have confirmed that if we were going to get sued for a, a soap slip, that could be possibly $80,000 or more. We're going, to, we're going to go out and do this. And historically, it admits they haven't done it because they're worried about litigation. That's cold, hard facts. We're worried about litigation. So once again, we're going to saddle the rate pays because the, the people that, that are staring at me right now, they don't care less because it's not their money. But the rate payers and the organisation will get sued if that happens. And it's not going to help the pandemic situation we're in now. It's not going to do a thing in regards to that because we're not going the whole hog. We'd be better off in saying, let's shut down all our public toilets except for 10, but we'll put soap dispensers in there, we'll put the covers, and we'll put paper towel dispensers in 10. And we'll just have 10 going, and then we'll be able to stop the pandemic. But that's not what's happened. That's just a touchy-feely motion that's tried to, it's just trying to be popular. And this isn't going to do anything again except cost ratepayers money and give something for, for vandals to vandalise. So I think it's a really poor motion and I think it's a really poor amendment. I won't be voting for it. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Marquette. I appreciate uh, it. Councillor Best. Thank you. A question, if I may, first through you to Mr Murphy. Mr Murphy, can you hear me? Thank you. Mr Murphy, when, when the COVID um, outbreak occurred, you know, back early in the year, February, March, a bit of a blur, isn't it? It was March, I think. Um, did did councillors um, give you some advice and direction about um, the distribution of hand sanitizers at the different depots and and different facilities? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best. No, I don't recall that happening. Did councillors give you any assistance or guidance when you were briefing us about you know, facilities that you closed, such as our libraries and a whole of other areas that you took the initiative to shut down? Um, you, you did that operationally of your own volition, I think. Do, you didn't consult us, I don't believe. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best, I think um, the majority of those were as a result of public health orders. So I guess the... Um, the ability for us to influence that was quite limited. Do you think, Mr. Murphy, that your staff are are, are uh, capable of being able to, an operational level, um, deal with um, uh, public hygiene issues? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best, yes, I do. Uh, we've got fantastic staff, and I believe they're doing their, their best. Um, I suppose the only limitation is the budget constraints under which we operate. That is, we don't have any. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best, uh, apart from the resolution in relation to the $100,000 that uh, was mentioned earlier. Oh, well, Madam Mayor, I might make comment to this. Um, I was just um, drifting away whilst uh, Councillor Mark Pratt was speaking and just looking down on the council, not condescendingly, but just from an observer point of view and there's 40 people watching now. I think that's a bit dodgy, actually, communications, because there's been 40 people watching for the last two hours. I think somebody's fiddled the numbers in there, but anyway, I'll go with it. So the 40 poor people that are watching this would just think this is a bowl of vomit, what they're watching. It is just a circus. This is nothing Sorry, Councillor more... Best, I have a point of order from Councillor Sundstrom. No, another contribution. And thanks, Councillor Best, for your contribution. Councillor Sundstrom. <laughs> I'll thank Councillor Best for thanking me for my contribution in advance, saving the, the time. Um, but the point of order is the uh, councillor has just um, cast aspersions across uh, the meeting staff or somebody from staff because he's made an accusation that somebody's um, bodging up the numbers. And I'd like Councillor Best to withdraw and apologise. 
Thanks, Councillor Sundstrom. Councillor Best, you are making your you are casting aspersions on somebody. So, um, I think Councillor Sundstrom is correct. Can you, I'd like you to retract that statement. I don't believe that staff would be doing any such thing. Well, the number of 40 has been on the screen for three hours and hasn't changed. Is that really conceivable that nobody has left or or come into our chat room in the last three hours? I'm, I might be many things, but I'm not an idiot, right? So something's wrong. The numbers are wrong. Someone's pressed the wrong button. But look, let's get back to the issue and stop prattling um, about me. who's into the room. Sorry, and not excuse me, room. Councillor Best. No, I don't the me. mayor hasn't ruled. So, well, Councillor Best... Oh. So, Councillor Best, I ask no, you No, I'm to... not going to withdraw. I'm not going to. You're just... not going to withdraw? No, no, no I'm not going to. Go, just do another code of conduct complaint and add the other $150,000 to that exercise you're doing behind the scenes. So, look, I'll speak to the mayor. I beg your pardon, Councillor Best. What, you're now casting aspersions that I'm putting in code of conduct? No, I'm, no, I'm saying no, in general. No, that's what you just said. I, you I need to take that I would, back. I, I didn't say it take about that you. Back. I well, take no, it back. Well, no, you did, Councillor Best. I take it back. I took it back. I just took it back. Do you see me? Reeling it in. Okay. Now I'll qualify what I was saying. We have more than $100,000 worth of code of conduct complaints running in this council, courtesy of a lot of people in this room, costing our ratepayers a fortune. That's the truth. Thanks, right. Councillor Best. I'm moving on. One moment. I have a procedural from Councillor McGregor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, the speaker's become belligerent. They're not following the directions of the chair. I move a procedural motion that they no longer be heard. Do you have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Greenaway. Anybody want to speak to that motion? Yes, I'll speak to it. Speak to it, Councillor Best. Um, this is a nonsense that a Councillor McGregor is pulling on to try and stop comments that he doesn't like hearing. What I just outlined a moment ago is putting shutters through this organisation staff time and investigators because councillors squabbling behind the scenes making code of conduct complaints about each other. There are multiple, multiple complaints running on multiple councillors and when the ratepayers get the bill, they're going to be disgusted in the behaviour behind the scenes. And if you people don't like the truth, well then a bit of bad luck because September will come and all these figures will come out along with the roughly $150 million that this council is going to be in the red on courtesy of the actions of this particular council. So I would like to speak to the SOAP issue and we can move on from the truth and I'll put up a motion on that one for you all to debate later about the code of conduct costs to the ratepayers. We'll have a go right. at that one later. Right, well I have a procedural motion moved by Councillor McGregor, second by Councillor Greenaway. Um, all those in favour of the procedural that the speaker not be heard. Cease speaking. Councillor Smith, Councillor Vincent, Councillor Greenaway, Councillor Hogan, Councillor Mertens, Councillor, oh, sorry, um, Councillor Matthews, Councillor Hogan, Councillor Vincent, Councillor Greenaway, Councillor Smith, Councillor Mertens, Councillor McGregor, Councillor Sundstrom. All those against? Councillor Pillen, Councillor Gale, Councillor Best, Councillor Marquette, Councillor McLaughlin, Councillor Burke. The motion, the Motion is carried. Council best. All time low. That's it. Thank you very much. All time much. low. We're moving on. Now I'm totally lost as to where I'm up to. Councillor Hogan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to actually wind up this debate by saying that we keep getting into the vandalism aspect. If we continue to do that, we won't do anything. It's as simple as that. Every time somebody says, no, we can't do that, it'll get vandalised, we don't do it. We need to move on with this. There's two aspects to COVID. It's BC and AC. Now, BC with COVID is we're all taught after you went to the bathroom to use soap. We're also taught to cover our faces when we sneeze. COVID is a pandemic this is about minimising risk and risk management for our council. The soap dispensers in the toilets will go into the, the COVID safety plan, I'm sure, by council. And I want to thank uh, Stephanie Short and others. Sorry, for, Councillor for Hogan, I have, and, I have a... Sorry, Councillor Hogan, I have a point of order oh, by Councillor Marquette. Why? I don't know. 
Madam Mayor, I, Madam Mayor, I'm disgusted. Councillor Greenaway and Councillor Vincent clearly said that this has got nothing to do with COVID. I can't believe well, Councillor Hogan. I can't Councilor believe Councillor Hogan. Him. That's not me. I can't Sorry, believe Councillor Hogan, Hogan would put that aspersions on them. It's terrible. It's if absolutely listen, terrible. If you Sorry, listen, can't. listen to what I, I have can't to listen, say. I can't listen and do that to my colleagues. There were two horrible. things. There's six S's. Can I rule Hoping, on that? Sorry, Councillor Hogan. Sorry. I just rule on it. That's not yeah. a point of order, Councillor Mike Quit. Thank you for that. We'll have to go to Councillor Hogan. Right. After COVID, four S's, social distancing, sanitizer, soap and sneezing. They're the four things through public health orders that every single one of us have been asked to take responsibility for. Unfortunately, there's those that don't. We know that through our shopping centres with social distancing. Sanitizers, we're pretty well on top of that. However, it's been proven to minimise risk of COVID and contraction that soap works. That's why we need it in all our public toilets and we need to just bring back the basics, which is sensible personal hygiene to help minimise the risk. This isn't about getting rid of COVID, it's about minimising it. And if you'd read the, co the public health orders from the very, very beginning and how this is, uh, how this is rolled out, it has been very, very difficult for different types of industry to understand what is important to them and what isn't. However, as an organisation who takes their duty of care to our residents very seriously, we need to be doing soap in every single public toilet. And thank you for Councillor Greenaway for driving this through on behalf of the community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hogan. Um, right, if there are no further, unless Councillor Sundstrom, did you? No, okay, uh, right, oh, sorry, Councillor Gale. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just off the back of Councillor Hogan's commentary around um, risk management and risk minimisation, given this week, um, a lot of the there's been a few Australian scientists that have come out and said um, the risks of soap dispenser buttons. Uh, question through you, if I may, Madam Mayor, I think to Director Julie Vaughan. Julie, do we have any mechanism in place with regards to minimising the risks with regards to the buttons on the soap dispensers? Through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Gale, I mean, I presume you're referencing um, in a sense of transferring of anything is your question. Um, I mean, the shorter answer is we have we will have nothing in addition to any other public facility that has the push button dispensers. I think um, Professor Short um, indicated in her address to council laws earlier this evening that um, you know, the risk would be minimised because people would be obviously placing soap onto their hands and then washing straight thereafter. So, um, but no, it, it's um, the intention and what has been costed currently is push button, not um, sensor operated. Um, question, if I may, through to yourself, Madam Mayor, to get around, um, because that's not what the scientists have come out and said. They've said that the, if there is COVID, it will stay on the buttons. So I guess, Madam Mayor, the question through to yourself is, have you considered in your column getting people to use their elbow? Like, how do we get around this with regards to ensuring that we don't, from a legal perspective, leave ourselves wide open? Uh, thanks for the question, Councillor Gale. We can certainly add what we need to add to the um, to the column. So I'm open to suggestions for the for the column. But um, yeah, so that that's fine. I mean, I just want to add that I myself will use toilet paper to push the button. So I actually use toilet paper to push the button, and then I also use toilet paper to exit the toilet. And then I chuck the toilet paper away. So in relation to paper towel, I don't need the paper towel because I can use I use toilet paper. But that's something that I've chosen to do in my when I go to public toilets, etc. It, it might also work. So yeah, we're happy to do that. Um, write a reply, Council Greenaway. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Oh, very disappointing um, turn of events for a moment there. Um, I was just left wondering actually whether Councillor Marquette has just put himself forward as the poster boy for negativity. 
Um, it's just a shame he doesn't come up with some positive ideas for the community and that he just condemns the Central Coast as being somehow so full of vandals that there's going to be huge amounts of money wasted um, from our very own community members. Um, I have a little bit more faith in our people and I also believe that other councils have been able to implement soap in in public toilets without any great difficulty. And I just don't see the point in putting our community down as if we're dealing with people that just won't be able to manage soap dispensers and will rip them off walls and cost us a fortune. I feel that's a very terrible way to portray the community. Um, as for Councillor Best's comment that this motion's a bucket of vomit, well, I was just very pleased that the rest of the councillors or the ones who did voted not to hear him any further. I really don't know why he has to go down those paths. Um, interesting that there's comment around whether pushing the button is now going to spread COVID. Um, I had someone write to me, and I'm sure it was tongue in cheek, but they said, why don't you just take all the hand basins out? Because if you haven't got soap and you're just watch, washing in plain cold water, you might as well just have no hand basins and don't even bother putting them in there. And I'm sure they said that tongue in cheek. But after listening to what some of these other people have said, honestly, it makes me think maybe they should have put an, a, an amendment up just to take all the taps out. I mean, it's just so terrible. But anyway, on a more positive note, um, I will thank those who have supported the motion in their, in their speech. Um, I will again thank the community for what they've um, said in support of this. And I do hope that um, whether we have COVID with us Sorry, for, Councillor you know, Greenaway, I, um, I have a point of order. And Councillor Marquette. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I appreciate that. Madam Mayor, um, it's, I was it was just accused that um, I, I was I was trying to say that the Central Coast uh, are going to create massive vandalism, and, and I'm having a crack at them as people. Can I just have it reversed and noted that that the figure I used is the figure that's actually in the report. I used a dollar figure for the vandalism amount that staff put in the report. So can I please have that retracted? Councillor Greenaway. That was my understanding. I'm sorry if I misunderstood you, Councillor Marquette, but it it's just you, me you, you did, seem to. Thank you. Well, she Thank just you. apologised. Thank you. Thank you. No, if I've, I've misunderstood you, but that's what I understood you to mean. Um, now, where was I? Um, yeah, just on a positive note, yes, that so many people have been supportive of this motion and whether we have COVID with us for another five minutes or another five years, that's not the sole reason for this motion. I will just um, emphasise that again for those who don't seem to be able to grasp it. Um, because as I mentioned during, I think it was the briefings, one of the um, places where there was going to be no soap was the Tugra Dog Park. And I just thought, well, people there are patting their dogs, feeding their dogs, um, cleaning up after their dogs. Um, so perhaps that's not so much a, a COVID um, related site, but certainly it's a site that screams out for soap. So anyway, I again commend this motion to the Chamber and thank everyone for their involvement. And I really hope that we can see this as a positive thing for our um, community members, as well as all the visitors and businesses that come to this region. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Greenway. I'll therefore move, put the motion as moved by Councillor Greenway, second by Councillor Vincent. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Pillen, Councillor Matthews, Councillor Hogan, Councillor McLaughlin, Councillor Gale, Councillor Holstein, Councillor Best, Councillor Sundstrom, Councillor Vincent, Councillor Greenaway, Councillor Mertens, Councillor McGregor, Councillor Smith and Councillor Burke. All those against, Councillor Marquette, I declare the motion carried. Thank you, Councillors. Um, item 4.3, the activities of the Development Assessment and Environment and Certification Units. In the name of Councillor Smith, I believe you may have an amendment. Councillor Smith. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. It's um, an alternate motion um, that's up on the screen and simply I just request that staff in their reports also include reporting on the Local Planning Panel, Regional Planning Panel, um, 
and any other DAs where council is not the consent authority. So it just means that we'll get figures on um, number of DAs, number of approvals, but also any variations to development standards. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for Council Smith's motion, Council McGregor? Council Smith, would you like to speak to your motion? No, that's fine, Madam Mayor. Council McGregor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I, I don't really think this is very controversial. Our staff are doing the assessment reports anyway, so all the information would easily be available to what the local planning panel or the regional planning panel are approving. So I don't see this as being something that would create a you know, a plethora of additional costs or anything like that before we get the idiotic arguments against it. So can we just move this and get on with it and then try and get some business achieved like adults tonight after the last debate? Thanks. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Um, I have nobody in the chat box. Does anybody want to speak against the motion? No. Great. Councillor Smith, would you like to write a reply? No, I'm no. fine. Thanks. Councillors, I'll therefore... Um, Move the motion as put by Councillor Smith and second by Councillor McGregor. All those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Thank you, Councillors. Um, Councillors, we're now moving on to the notices of motions and we are up to item 6.1, deferred item notice of motion, Brewwater Hotel site in Man Street, Gosford. In the name of Councillor Greenaway, is that you're moving that motion? Um, I don't know, Madam Mayor, to be perfectly frank. I did have a subsequent motion which I sent through to staff, but I have since been advised that it may not be the most appropriate way to go. Um, my intention with this motion is to have the Broadwater Hotel site considered as Actually, temporary sorry, public Councillor car parking. Away, at the moment, um, you need a, a motion on the books before we can actually get into debate or, or have a discussion. So okay. you're either um, moving this or you're going to make some Okay, changes. I'm moving this, but I'll be seeking to amend it after I ask staff. Okay, do we have a seconder for this motion? Councillor McGregor. Right, Councillor Greenaway, you can now do what you need to do. Thank you. Okay, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, to the staff, I'm not sure who the most appropriate person is, but my intention is to have this um, site looked at as possible temporary car parking. Um, now, I, when I first brought this up, which was, I think it was deferred from the last meeting, there was a tender that had gone out, but then had, um, I think there'd been some issue with the advertising or something. So it had to be reissued. So currently, so there was no tender, but now there is a tender back out. So I'm not sure what to do given that there's now another tender out and I want to have it examined as um, being used as a car park. Whereas the tender is saying that they just want to leave it as a vacant block with boarding and fencing around it. So is anyone able to assist me please in altering um, item or well, paragraph probably three? Um, because I don't want to just investigate it, I want it to be considered as an option. Mr. Martello, we have a car parking strategy. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, we do have a car parking strategy that's just been exhibited and is uh, in the process of being um, prepared to be um, considered by council for adoption. Um, I, like I've been corresponding with Councillor Greenway this evening, trying to um, find a way forward for this. Um, I believe the challenge that we have is that the proposal to provide car parking on that site is unfunded at the moment. And the code of meeting practice in section 10.9 requires that a motion or an amendment to a motion raised during debate um, that requires the expenditure of funds on works or service services other than those already provided for in council's current adopted operational plan, must identify the source of funding for the expenditure that is the subject of the motion. We don't have that at the moment and we need councillors to um, confirm uh, where these funds are coming from. The process that we agreed to in the operational plan uh, adoption was that uh, we would post the quarterly budget sessions and um, any changes to the um, budgeting would be considered then. So that my, my point suggestion. is that 
rather than just have it sitting there vacant um, and, and putting turf down and fencing around it, that we instead have it as parking. So there would be some costs taken out in order to put um, parking in. So the whole idea is trying to get a, a costing to see whether whether it would be something that we could proceed with because it's not actually going to be more expensive than what you're initially proposing. I mean, it's going to be vacant I, land. Why can't we have it as vacant land with a function? I think Mr. Martello has answered the question, Councillor Greenaway, and we have a car parking strategy and if we... You know, it should have been considered under that. But, look, Councillor McGregor has a question, so let, can I just move to him in, to, in order to get things moving a little bit? Councillor McGregor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, my question's to the mover of the, the resolution. Um, as we talked about earlier this afternoon in the, the briefing, I asked about the current staff intentions and future staff intentions for the report. Now, I've seconded your motion for the purpose of debate. I don't disagree with the intention. However, I believe a majority of councillors would. So I would ask a question of you. Would you consider amending your resolution to ask for a report back to council on the current and potential future plans or future uses for this specific site? Absolutely. That was part of, part of the reason that I wanted to have it looked at as a car park is because we don't know what it's going to be used for. So it could sit there for years. So we might as well use it. So... Absolutely. I'm, I'm happy so, to change that. I so given that. that you're happy to change that, could we change just um, change what's on the screen now for it to read something along the lines of number one, that we receive a report um, on the current activities well, we or current leave, intentions sorry. for the can, thing? So can leave we leave one? one? Leave one? Yep. And then... An additional point after that saying and um, the, the report to include potential future uses or potential future options for the site. Does that sound like something that you'd be willing to have as the, the resolution? Yes. So perhaps um, Um, maybe just for that one, including um, such things as temporary car parking. Um, and actually, I think, Councillor McGregor, your question was a little different to how that's come up. It's just asking for a report with potential uses for the site. Um, um, I, I did mention current plans. Now, as far as I'm aware, the, the current plans are to demolish it. So I'm assuming that's covered by number one. But if there are any plans beyond that, it'd be nice to know what they are. Um, and sale, noting that um, that council isn't um, promoting the sale of it, we just want to know whether um, there have been any offers to purchase. If that's okay with you, Councillor McGregor, because well, there's plenty of rumours going around about what's happening in that part of Gosford. So let's see if this can be some fact to the rumours or not. Um, and sorry, point two, um, and any future uses and any potential sale rather than sales, um, including whether we've received any offers. To purchase. Now, I'm happy for that to be tidied up by any staff who feel that they're not clear on what is intended there. So has everyone had the opportunity to read that? I might speak to it if so. Yep, Councillor 
screen away if you want to start speaking to us. Yes, thank you. Um, it's extremely well known that um, a lack of parking is an ongoing issue for Gosford. And the Broadwater site is owned by council or more accurately owned by the residents of the Central Coast. Now, if we don't have any money in the current budget to do anything with the site, and as far as I'm aware, there's no current DA, there's no other proposals. So from what I can tell, the site could sit there for months, if not years. So nobody really knows until a decision has been made as to what its future is. So my whole intention was to, instead of turfing this land and putting fencing and hoarding around it, um, to use it, use it as temporary car parking. The site itself will be um, relatively level. Uh, it'll have direct pedestrian access to Man Street. It would be pretty ideal. Now, I understand the site is constrained by the steepness at the back. I can tell that it's fairly apparent. Um, but I just thought with you know modern engineering, that wouldn't be too hard to overcome. Um, and having a parking facility like that in the centre of Goss would be, for, would be great for residents and it'd be great for business. Um, however, if, if we can't do that, that's fine, but the community is often left dissatisfied when we just wave them away, you know, it's not in the budget, it's not in the budget. So what I initially thought was, can we at least see what it would cost? Because perhaps, it, you know, if it's going to be vacant anyway, it's really only a matter of getting access and those sort of things sometimes can be overcome. Um, I'm not asking for anything spectacular. If we're going to be um, utilising it for another purpose in a couple of years or a couple of months or whenever, there's no point in making it in any sort of fancy car park to then have to dig up. I don't want to spend any money. But there is, for example, up at the Haven, um, a vacant area that people use when they go to the Haven. There's no asphalt there. There's no white lines. There's no wheel stops. There's no reflective markers. There's no car parking app. It's just dirt. Um, and yet somehow manage, people manage to park there. And I just think, well, if it's good enough for Terrigal to have this sort of casual, unofficial car parking spaces, then it's good enough for Gosford. So that's, that's all I was wanting to do, look at what we can do for our community. And I just sometimes am quite disheartened that it becomes so difficult. Um, but anyway, if the land is left vacant and people see we are doing nothing with it, I think we at the very least should be able to say that we seriously looked into it and that we tried to deliver something for the community, that we didn't just shrug and say it was all too hard. Um, so finally, one of my first motions ever in this council was to open the Healy Street car park in Wyong to the public. The residents and businesses of Gosford should be afforded the same consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Um, I, I don't really need to speak to this. I think the resolution's quite clear. I think we've talked about this in the briefing. Everyone knows what's happening with this one, so I'd be happy for it just to go to a vote. Thank you. I've got, I'm just checking with the chat. Sorry, everybody. Councillor Gale. Um, Madam Mayor, I was going to speak against it, but now the motion's completely changed as to what it was. Um, in the business paper, so I'll refrain for the moment. Thank you. Thank you. I've got Councillor McGlock. Oh, sorry, Councillor Holstein. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I uh, appreciate the tried to change the motion, but it still includes car parking in there. We've got a car parking strategy. I'll note to the councillors, and it's been said by Councillor Greenway, there is no access from the rear because of the slope of the land. I think it's... Uh, total about three to four metres in height. So it means your access would be coming from Man Street. There is no road entry between Erina and uh, Georgiana anywhere on Man Street. You're going to still have the council operation here and you're going to have a driveway in for a car park. Um, I'm happy to find some alternate potential uses for the land once it's been demolished. I agree with that. But a car park on that site, totally inappropriate and I can't support it while that word is in there. It would be um, unrealistic. It's not as though the car parking issue is not being addressed. That's why the strategy is out there at the moment. Um, I, I'm sorry, Councillor Greenway, I know you're trying to get a good intention. You take car park out of it, I'll go right with you. But a, a car park in the main street of Gosford there 
Um, when we've got the strategy moving forward, I think it's going to look an eyesore. Let's tidy it up. Let's demolish it. Let's have it look something. But a car park is just not appropriate um, there. And it's a safety issue in and out. There is no other road access or property access, vehicular access anywhere. And you can go walk along that street from Georgiana um, all the way down to, um, to, to Erina. So it's just not appropriate. And I can't support it while car parking is in that suggestion. Thank you, Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, thank you. Just, just I'm just concerned how long. Um, Point started. of order, Madam Mayor. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Councillor McLaughlin. I just thought I'd jump in before you actually um, speak. So it's nothing to do with you. I just noticed that point two um, didn't include where I, where it says um, where the council has received any offers to purchase. I, I did say, um, noting that it's not our intention to sell it, and that's actually not in the motion. What's the point of order? That, so the, she wants that to we're correct. debating. I want to, it's you know, not want to correct really, it. Yeah, okay. It's not really a point of order. You could, oh, I, I thought you had fine. to point that out sooner rather yeah. than later. But anyway, no sorry. Go ahead, Councillor McLaughlin. Sorry. Yep. Councillor McLaughlin. That's okay. Um, I understand what, what you're, you're, you're trying to do, Councillor Greenaway. Um, I do concur with uh, Councillor Holstein, the access and the the um, uh, just the mechanics of trying to create a car park there will be difficult, if not impossible. Um, and I, I'm just wondering whether or not the report should come back to us before we demolish. It says it confirms the intention to demolish the Broadwater site. And they'll, they'll come back with a report, but the report will be limited because a lot of the, the building will be gone. Um, it's a rule of thumb with any development. You don't knock down your existing uh, structures until you know what you're going to do or you've got your DA in place. Um, you know, a, a, a former hotel site is worth more than a vacant site in Gosford. Um, if, if we were to turn around and, and sell the site um, or do something alternative with it, uh, it would be worth more with the existing building on it. So I don't see why we should devalue our site um, just because we we have trouble in, with some security, uh, you know. So I've got heaps of vacant heaps of vacant properties right across Australia. No one's running around knocking their buildings down because someone got in it. And I think um, you know, I think if we can, if you would accept an amendment to say that provide a report prior to demolition, with the potential future uses, that that would um, I think would broaden up your horizon, broaden up what you want to try and do. You have proposed wording, Councillor McLaughlin? Oh, it just says where it says, obviously, provide a report, I think, prior to demolition. Pro come back to us prior to them. Don't demolish it and then come back and say, what do you what do you want to do with the site? And we said, oh, we could have done this. We could have done that with the building when the building's gone. So I think if you just come back and say, look, prior to demolition, provide a report to with potential uses, I think that would that would broaden up, you know, what you, what you want to try and do with the site. I, I agree. You shouldn't just sort of knock it over and do nothing. I agree. I agree hundred percent what you're saying, but uh, you may not have to knock it over. You, you may, I don't know how many years we're going to be sitting. Sorry, there Councillor McLaughlin. I have a point of order from <laughs> Councillor Sundstrom. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, just under the practice, uh, an amendment shouldn't be a direct opposite to a, um, a motion that's on the table, should it? And, uh, you know, to, to remove the confirmation that the intention is to demolish seems to be a direct opposite. I'll take your word. Your, your the, okay, so the point of order is that Councillor McGraw, you're suggesting that Councillor McLaughlin's um, amendment, amendment direct is opposite. direct. Just technicality. Totally, but yeah, I know, technicality. Legal, get some legal advice. Yeah, so count, um, calling everybody counsellor. Uh, <laughs> Sullivan, I'm sorry, I apologise. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, I'm just trying to get some clarity. Um, Councillor McLaughlin, are you moving an amendment or are you seeking to amend the current motion? I'm seeking to amend the current motion. Well, then it wouldn't be a direct negative. There'd only be one motion on the table. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so I think what Councillor McLaughlin wants is in paragraph two, that council requests the chief executive officer um, that prior that, oh, that no, question. I think he actually wants you to amend prior the first one to the yeah. demolition. No, I think he wants you to amend point one that before it confirms its intention to dem to. Well, I demolish. think we should just delete point one. And yeah, so then we're just saying yeah, that would do it. Yeah. The council that council requests the CEO to provide a report prior to the demolition of the Broadwater Hotel with potential future uses for the site. Not not perfect, but I think it'll do. Um, I'm not sure which staff member needs to implement it and whether they need clarity. So I've got um, Mr. Martello, can you just part two? Apparently it's a little bit messy. Yes. Um, can you just. Uh, oh no. Sorry, it's gone from my screen now. Um, it, was a, it was an issue, I guess, with the way that it's drafted in that um, it's asking us to look at potential future uses for the site, including parking and any potential sale. Um, the sentence then goes on to affirm that council has no intention to sell. So I think we need to resolve that matter. Are we to investigate a potential sale or is there no intention to sell? What about just um, uh, what future uses of the site? Just come back with a report and say what we could do with it. Okay, just delete and just delete the um, and any potential sale. And we can just, because I want to know whether council's been receiving any offers and people keep telling me, oh, are you selling it? And I think, well, not that I know of. So um, so future uses, including whether council has received any offers. So it's not a matter of whether we're going to sell it or not going to sell it. I just think we need to know whether people have approached council to purchase it. How does that go, Mr. Matello? Uh, thank you. Um Councillor Greener, I think that resolves the the um, the contradiction in, in the wording. Okay. And Madam Mayor, what about the two sites that actually adjoin it that Council have purchased as well? So is they included or is it only the Broadwater site? Only the Broadwater site according to the motion that was brought. Are they being demolished or I don't I don't know. I was only asking about this particular site. Okay. Thank you, Councillor um, McLaughlin. Now I'm confused as to where we're up to. Sorry, councillors. I've just got to go back. No. Okay. I believe we've got Councillor McLaughlin. He's spoken an amendment. Um, I'm actually going to speak against the motion. Um, I can't support it in relation to car parking. Um, first of all, you say that people park at Terrigal on a on a like blade of grass or the grass well they're probably parking illegally it's not a car park as such um we have a strategy a car parking strategy this was the time that you possibly should have been bringing it up it's already been out in public consultation um council has built with um grants from the state a brand new car park on the outskirts of gosford and we have a shuttle bus that delivers people safely back into uh, the CBD. It's a safer option. It's under lights, it's under cameras, um, and it's five minutes from the CBD and you can park there, as you said, using the app. So we are providing um, car parks for um, the Gosford, just not right in the CBD. Um, however, the strategy in a whole, I'd love, I'd love to um, have all the blocks of dirt at the entrance that we have vacant. And we have lots of blocks of dirt at the entrance vacant. I've tried to get council to put a little bit of bitumen in the potholes and create a parking um, spot for our tourists. But what we got was a fence. So at the entrance, we're desperate for car parking. Um, and, you know, again, there's strategy and I just have to sit sit tight and wait for the strategy. So I just don't believe that this should be turned into a car park. So I certainly um, won't be um, supporting this motion. 
councillors, is there anybody else that wants to speak for this? Councillor McGregor. Um, very briefly, I just have a question. Now, given um, that there's lots of interest in this, lots of different points of views and things, it seems like there's already plans in, in place. All I, my question is, is can we have a briefing and or a site inspection here because this is just another one of those things where there's so many people talking at cross purposes. It's not clear what's going on. Can we just get some facts? Um, I know it says in the motion that we're going to have a, a report, but either after or prior to at some point, I, I just think that it would be nice if we get some sort of a briefing or do a site visit for this particular site. I believe there's some words going up. Councillor Greenaway. Councillor McGregor's suggesting an addition. Are you happy with that addition? Councillor Greenaway. Is it an addition or is it a replacement? Well, I. It I'm was assuming. originally just an open question to the to the staff, but if we want to put it in the motion, I don't think we really need to be that prescriptive. It's just another example of these things where people don't really seem to know what's going on. They want to find out what's going on when they're making key decisions in a strategic town centre. Right. So it's been added to the motion. I guess I'm asking the mover, is she happy for that? Yes, that's a yes, so it can stay. Okay, thank you. I take there are no further speakers. So, Councillor Sundstrom. I've just put in some text into the chat box and it comes from uh, page 204 and it's part B of the staff recommendation. And I think it aligns with um, the intent of the mover and seconder. And it reads like this, defer consideration of this matter to be undertaken as part of the formal quarterly review process to ensure consistency and transparency. And I'll offer it as a... Um, I, I do thank you for that, Councillor Sunstrom, but I think that's referring to the um, financial aspects of it and we're not asking for any financial um, matters now. We're just asking for a, a report. I think that was in reference to like they were saying, there's no money to provide a car park. And that's why they said to defer it until it was um, the quarterly review process. That's my um, understanding. Yeah, look, councillors, I've just um, received some information from Mr Martello and that site is a hazard and is not safe for a, sort of for a site inspection. So a briefing okay. perhaps, but not a site inspection as, as it's unsafe. So briefing. Okay. All right. Um, Councillor Greenway, write a reply. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. <laughs> um, just want to clarify one of the things I mentioned about um, the Haven. There used to be plant and equipment parked up um, on the southwestern side, not of the oval, but on the southwestern side of the oval. Um, it was on dirt. It wasn't on the grass. I'm quite sure it wasn't illegal. Um, so just wanted to clarify that. I'm, the reason I used that as an example was just to show that it was that was the type of standard that people are comfortable with to park their car when they're needing a space. They're not always needing the, um, you know, the perfectly level black bitumen with the lines and the tyre stops and the everything else. Um, anyway, um, unfortunately tonight I wasn't able to achieve my purpose, which was to have this looked at um, in greater detail, but at least we're now going to look at using it for something because there's no doubt that the community gets very frustrated in seeing one of their assets sitting there, boarded up, not being used. So um, it may not be achieving quite what I was hoping for, but it, it at least is a start to having the conversation about what we can do on this site or with this site. Um, and hopefully, you know, lead to some good outcomes for the community. Um, I don't think I need to add anything further. Thank you, councillors. Um, Mr Martello has asked 
could he speak? Um, we just did write a reply, but I'll I'll allow you to speak, Mr. Martello. Apologies and thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, councillors, I just wanted to reinforce advice that's been provided previously. The site is a serious risk to public safety and public health at the moment. Uh, that is why the recommendation has been made to be, for it to be demolished and that's not taken upon lightly. Uh, the other thing I guess I'd like to advise councillors is that the, there is a current tender out for demolition. So any delays may require that to be withdrawn once again. And there are risks attached to that as well. Thank you, councillor. Oh, sorry, oh, everybody's a councillor tonight. My apologies. Councillor Greenaway, you've had right a reply. Uh, yes, but I just misheard that last bit that Mr Martello said. Um, Any delays may also have implications. Oh, for the tender. So, mm, okay. Well, when did the tender go out? Uh, the tender is currently out. Um, and submissions are due and closing on the 1st of September. So we'll do our best, I guess, to expedite the um, proposed um, briefing. briefing and uh, report to councillors. Okay. Does it, how long does it take normally to go through the, like the tender submissions? Is that a process that takes you weeks or? The, the intent um, and the schedule is that the tender be awarded before the end of the month of September. Demolition okay. be undertaken between September and December. Okay, thank you. Um, we've had right of reply, so I'll now put it to the vote. It's moved by Councillor Greenway, second by Councillor McGregor. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor McLaughlin, Councillor Greenway, Councillor McGregor, Councillor Smith. All those against? Councillor Matthews, Councillor, Councillor Pillen, Councillor Matthews, Councillor Hogan, Councillor Marquette, Councillor Gale. Councillor Best, Councillor Sundstrom, Councillor Vincent, Councillor Mertens and Councillor Burke. The motion is lost. Thank you, councillors. Councillors, it's after 10.30. I will have to um, get a procedural motion to um, either move forward or defer. So if I'm in your hands, councillors, as to what we do next. Do I have any motions from the floor? No. Well. Great, Councillor Best. Can you hear me, Lisa? I can. Great. Um, 10.36, I'm happy to defer if anyone wants to second that. Oh, I have a second from Councillor Sundstrom. He also said he's happy to defer. Let's go um, home. Do I have anybody in opposition to deferring? Oh, therefore, I'll... Put the motion as um, moved to defer. All those in favour of the deferral motion of item 6.2, notice the motion committee costs update. 6.3, notice the motion forgotten North Gateway disgrace. All those in favour of the deferral, please raise your hand. I think that looks like that's unanimous. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, staff. At that, I will... Oh, sorry, Madam Mayor. I did put my hand down. I didn't want to vote for it. Okay. It wasn't sorry unanimous. about that. If the staff could... Well, they've, it's going to be too late. It looks like they've... I'll deal with it after. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, people. Thank you, viewers.